Hello everyone. In this video, I'll take up the topic trigonometry. The meaning of the word trigonometry is measuring the sides of a triangle. We have a main part in mathematics called as solving a triangle or finding the solution of a triangle. So what is meant by finding a solution or solving a triangle? So we know that a triangle has totally six elements, three angles and three sides. If few of the elements are given, then finding the remaining unknown elements of a triangle is called as solving a triangle. For example, here B equal to root 3, the small letter ABC indicate the sides of a triangle and capital ABC angles of a triangle. So B equal to root 3, C equal to 1 and A equal to 30 degree. Two sides and one angle is given. Then you have to find out the remaining one side and two angles. So that can be done using the formula cos A equal to B square plus C square minus A square divided by 2BC. Then one of the side is obtained. Then once again you have to find out the remaining two angles using some trigonometric identities or trigonometric formulas. So this is where the concept of uh, uh, trigonometry comes into picture. There are other incidents also but this is the simple example I am considering here. So this formula involves cause of A. So you should know what is meant by cause, cosine of uh, any value. So these are all trigonometric uh, functions. There is a generalization. We have trigonometric ratios also. Trigonometric functions are generalization of trigonometric ratios. All these come under trigonometry. So, uh, if you want to study about trigonometry, you have to study the basic uh, entities of trigonometry. They are nothing but the trigonometric ratios or else the trigonometric functions. So, before jumping into uh, to learn about trigonometry, we should know some basic concepts of geometry also. They start with the angle. So, what is an angle? Uh, how to measure an angle? What are different units used to measure an angle? Let us know about that first. So, angle means, suppose you have a ray which is called as OA. Now, I am going to rotate this. You consider a directed line. So, I am going to rotate this directed line in the anti-clockwise direction. So, this is the initial position of the ray. So, after some rotation, it takes a new position. Length won't change. Just the same ray. I am rotating it in the anti-clockwise direction. This is the new position taken by that ray. So now you have to measure the amount of rotation. Definitely if it gets rotated, by some amount it got rotated. So you have to measure that amount of rotation. Then that amount of rotation is called as an angle. There are different uh, like two types, two different types basically. One is positive angle, one is negative angle. If you have rotated in the anti-clockwise direction, then the angle is called as the positive angle, the measure of an and the rotation. If you have rotated in the clockwise direction, this direction, then you will get a negative angle. Means measurement remains the same. You have just the sign difference. So here it is positive angle. Here it is negative angle. If you have rotated by the same amount, suppose here 30 degrees rotation, positive here in this direction it is negative now you can name the some components of an angle initial side where it resides initially then terminal side where the ray gets ended up that is called as terminal side then this point o is called as point of rotation it is called as the vertex about which we are rotating the ray OA, so which is called as a vertex. These are the three components of an angle, vertex, initial side and terminal side. Now, how to measure an angle? The amount of rotation I told, so how to measure it? Suppose if you have travelled from this point to this point, you will measure what distance using kilometers, uh, you will say what is the distance traversed. So you will measure it. Similarly, how to measure an angle? There are different use, units for measurement. Like um, if you want to measure uh, the weight of an object, you can measure say it in pounds or you can say it in kilograms. There are different units. So 
here also to measure the amount of rotation by what value by what value it got rotated to do that you have different units i am considering here one of the two important units degree measure and the radian measure so let us see how to measure an angle using degree measure so i have considered here this diagram so here before uh, learning about um, degree measure so you should know what is one complete revolution or one complete rotation so if you have started from this position and if you are rotating this ray continuously and if you end up at the same position where initial side and terminal side coincides then that is called as one complete rotation or one revolution so that is one revolution that is equal to one complete rotation now this one complete rotation i'm talking about degree measure now this one complete rotation is divided into 360 equal parts here like this very small 360 equal parts now each part is called as one degree so this this small very small it is very minute so that is called as one degree so one complete rotation is uh, divided into 360 equal parts and one part of which is called as uh, one degree so one degree is nothing but that is uh, mathematically we will write 1 by 360th part of a revolution or 1 by 360th part of a complete rotation so one part out of 360 equal parts that is called as one degree now again that one degree it's very small here very small part it is divided into 60 equal parts and each part is called as a minute so one degree equal to 60 minutes because that one degree is divided into six equal parts and each part is called as a minute so that once again very minute it is one minute part is divided into 60 equal parts and each part is called as a second one minute equal to 60 seconds seconds double uh, lines here uh, minute single line so this is how the degree again it is divided into minutes and again it is divided into seconds therefore one degree is equal to 3600 seconds so first you should know what is the degree measure the one complete rotation is divided into 360 equal parts and each part is called as one degree so one degree is 1 by 360th part of a rotation So suppose if you want to twenty degree, twenty degree means it will come here. So you have to draw a line this much, like this, just twenty degree. The amount of rotation is here. This is twenty degree. Suppose uh, uh, here, if it comes here, then it is ninety degree. Amount of rotation. So you have rotated the line in this direction, and it is ninety uh, degree. So if you have rotated in the clockwise direction, then this becomes minus ninety degree. this is one unit for measuring the amount of rotation there is one more um, unit for measuring the amount of rotation or measuring an angle that is radian measure so what is meant by a radian measure suppose so this is with respect to circle means uh, if you are rotated any uh, anything then you can uh, have a circular motion there then it completes a circle using the circle so mathematically with the help of a circle we will define the radian measure but let us think about that's in this way first you have an initial side and this is your terminal side of an angle this is the angle traversed so the amount of rotation so here this much this part this part when you this is the the path of the rotation so now when you complete this path of rotation you will get a circle just imagine this as a circle this is not a perfect circle but just imagine you will get a circle you can complete a circle so therefore now this is the amount of rotation 
uh, this is an angle which is uh, subtended at the center. So by an arc, we can form an arc. So now I am defining that with respect to a unit circle. Unit circle means radius is one unit. If you can consider it as a one centimeter, one meter, anything, it is one unit. Suppose you have started from this position. So it is an angle subtended at the center of a unit circle by an arc whose length is equal to one unit. Because radius is here one unit. It is a unit circle. Suppose if you have a circle of arbitrary radius, like a radius, that is this is R. Of any radius, we don't know the exact value of the radius, some radius R. So in that case, if you want to call this as one radian, then the length of an arc must be equal to the radius of the circle. So this is the generalized definition of one radian. So one radian is the angle subtended at the center by an arc whose length equal to the radius of a circle. In case if you are defining it with the help of a unit circle, then one radian is the angle subtended at the center of a unit circle by an arc whose length equal to one unit. Here one unit I am specifying because radius is one unit. Otherwise it is arc length must be equal to the radius of the circle. Then that much angle subtended at the center is called as one radian. Suppose uh, if it is like um, radius is two, then the arc length must be two. It doesn't become two radian. Suppose if you have a radius 2 and arc length is also equal to 2, then still it is 1 radian. So if it is more than 1 radian means arc length should be more than the radius of the circle. Less than 1 radian means this is exactly now 1 radian. Look here. This is, uh, suppose I will take the unit circle only. This is uh, 1 radian means uh, 1 unit. Here 1 unit, arc length is also 1 unit. Suppose if your arc is here at this point this so this is more than one radian a b arc length is more than one unit therefore you have uh, the angle subtended at the center more than one radian suppose your arc is here b in this case this is less than one radian you can take it as a half radian if it is exactly the uh, length is half then half radian you can take. So this is the definition of one radian. So we are um, using the symbol one radian. You can write like this or else we can write it as one radian. C. Sub superscript C. It is one radian. So now when you have two different measurements uh, for the angle, then you can have interconversions also. For example, you can convert from pounds to kgs and kgs to pounds. So the conversion method will be there. Similarly, if you have measured some angle in uh, degrees, you can convert it into radians because the amount remains same. The amount of rotation remains same. Only the measuring scale changes. So in this language, like in the language of degree measure, if it is 30 degree, in the language of radian measure, how much it is that you have to uh, know. So that is called as interconversions. So conversions can be done using the formula from radians to degrees. So if you want to convert from a degree measure to radian measures to degrees, so then you have to multiply the given radian measure by 180 degree by pi. So easy to remember because pi radian is always equal to 180 degree. This we have pi radian equal to 180 degree and 2 pi radian is equal to 360 degree. So at one complete rotation we know that it is equal to 360 degree. Therefore one complete uh, rotation in terms of radians is 2 pi radian. Half of a rotation is pi radian in terms of degrees it is equal to 180 degrees. Suppose you, I had given you an angle, I have given you an angle which is in radians. Now I want to convert it into degrees. So in that case, this is the angle in radians. I have to multiply it by 180 degree by pi. So you may get confused. Uh, is it pi above the numerator or below the numerator? See, remember, if it is in radians, pi is in radians, radian, radian get cancelled. So you will get only the degree here. So that is 
the degree measure. If it is given in degrees, if you want to convert it into radians, so in that case, degree should come in the denominator. 180 degree should come in the denominator. So, degree degree cancels, you are remained with the unit of radian. So, pi by 180 degree into x degrees gives you uh, radian measure of the given degree angle. Here 180 by pi into x radian gives you the degree measure of the angle which is given in radians. You can have some examples. Let us take up some easier examples first. So let me take convert 90 degrees to radians. So it is given in degrees you see. So I want to convert 90 degrees to radians. So I told you to radians, therefore uh, pi radian should be in the numerator, 180 degree should be in the denominator into the given angle 90 degree which is equal to, so degrees degrees cancels you will get the answer in radians. So here 0 cancels, 1s, 2s, so that is equal to pi by 2 radian. So 90 degrees equal to pi by 2 radians. Similarly, 180 degrees equal to pi by 180 degree into 180 degree. Degree degree cancels, you are remain with radian, so it is pi radian. 270 degree is equal to pi by 180 degree into 270 degree. So, this cancels. So, you will get a 3 pi by after simplification, this is 3 pi by 2, 9 2 is 9 3 is 3 pi by 2 radian. Similarly, uh, 360 degree, this is pi by 180 degree into 360 degree is equal to, this 0 cancels, 2 is so 2 pi radian. These are kind of standard angles where you have to rem remember the uh, radian value as well as the degree value. So, these are simple conversions. So, if it is degrees, 180 degree should come in the denominator. That is how to remember. Degree should come in the denominator. Degree degree cancels, you are remained with only the radian. Suppose if you want to convert from radians to degrees, convert pi pi by 3 radians to degrees. So, I can write pi pi by 3 into pi should be in the denominator because pi radian cancels 180 degree should be in the numerator. So, this gives you Sorry, this is 60. This 0 will be here. Okay. 300 degrees. So, I have converted. Similarly, if you want uh, some other angle, like 2 pi by 3 radians, 2 degrees. So, you have 2 pi by 3 so, this pi should cancel, radian should cancel. So, pi radian should be in the denominator, 180 degree in the numerator. This is how the easier way to remember. Otherwise, in the exam, you will definitely get confusion. Is 180 in the numerator or denominator? So, just to avoid that confusion, confusion, you remember the radian, radian should get cancelled. Answer should be in degree. So, pi radian, pi radian cancels. This is 60. Okay, this 0 will be there. So, it is equal to 120 degree. These are simple conversions. Where simple conversions in the simple angles here. The conversion is easier that get cancelled and you will get the answer. Now, let me take up uh, some little bit complicated ones. Like suppose if you want to convert, convert 40 degree 20 minutes. Angle is given in this way. 40 degree 20 minutes. 2 radians. Okay. So, here, see for example, 40 degree means this one. Okay. Then, 
you should have the picture of 40 degree 20 minutes in your mind that is also an important that's the learning part see for example 40 degree means it comes here from this to 40 degree okay 20 minutes means this to 41 degrees here in between 40 and 41 this uh, that one degree is divided into 60 equal parts that each part is called as a one minute so somewhere in between that 40 degree 20 minutes comes that is the picture of 40 degree 20 minutes angle amount of measurement okay uh, so now you have to convert to do the conversion so we know that one degree equal to 60 minutes one degree is equal to 60 minutes let me write this completely in terms of degrees so, because it is in terms of degrees and minutes. So, here 20 minutes equal to how many degrees? So, it is 20 divided by 60 into 1 degree. So, that gives you 1 by 3 degree. Okay. So, this is equal to 40 1 by 3 degree mixed fraction. So, that is a 4 3 is a 120. 120 plus 1, 121 by 1. 121 by 3 degrees. Now I have written the given angle completely in terms of degrees because conversion becomes easier. Okay. Uh, so now this is in degrees. You have to convert it into radians. I told you degree should be in the denominator 180 degree because degree degree cancels. So pi radian is in the numerator. So you will get do all the simplification if you want. Otherwise keep it as it is as if it is not going directly cancelling by one fraction so no, not possible so keep as a 121 pi divided by pi u 40 radians this is the conversion where you are converting minutes to degrees first later we will be multiplying it by pi by 180 degree similarly uh, one more i'll give you convert uh, six radians to degrees six radians Two degrees. So this conversion I have to do now. So six radians, it is given in radians. So what I'll do is six radians equal to I want its degree measure, six radians. So radian should get cancelled, means pi radian should be in the denominator, 180 degree should be in the numerator. Now this unit cancels, radian radian gets cancelled. Six into 180 degree divided by pi let me use the value of pi as 22 by 7 6 into 180 degree divided by 22 by 7 so that goes to the numerator and the simplification should be done the simplification goes like this uh, suppose 1080 into 7 divided by 22 180 into 6 so 1080 into 7 divided by 22 this whole is in degrees okay so, still further, so this gives you three mixed fraction 3437 by 11 degrees. Okay. So, I have to, one complete uh, value I got, one whole number that is 343 degrees. Then remaining 7 by 11 degrees, I have to convert it into minutes because I will write, you can keep as this. Because it is also in degrees. But suppose if you still want it in minutes and second form. So in that case what you should do is. You have to go with the further extension of the simplification. That is 1 degree is 60 minutes. 7 by 11 degree is how many minutes. Means you have to multiply it by 60 minutes. That's it. So that is 7 by 11 into 60 minutes. So degree gets converted. This is a small fraction of the degree which gets converted into minutes. So that is equal to 343 degree. So do the simplification. After simplification, you will get this as 38 minutes and uh, two, 38 2 by 11 minutes together. Okay, I can write it as plus. This is 2 by 11 minutes. Now this is a full number, but this is a fraction. Minutes is in fraction. You can convert it into seconds. So again, this is equal to 343 degree plus 38 minutes plus. You know that 1 minute is 60 seconds. Uh, so 2 by 11 minutes is how many seconds? 
So that gives you 2 by 11 into, you can remember it as multiplying by 60, 60 seconds. So do the simplification. I hope you know the way of doing the simplification, 38 a minute. It is like 120 divided by 11. Then you have to divide it by, 120 is to be divided by 11. So the remainder that has to be written in the numerator, 343 degree plus 38 minutes plus you will get approximately 10.9 seconds. So, so you know that like this, 11s are 11, 1s are 11, okay, then 1 remains 10, that way, so in the sense, 10s are, okay. So 1, 10, then you will get 10 again, point, then 1 more, 0. So continuing with the division, that is how you will get 10.9 seconds. So now you can write it as 343 degree, 38 minutes, 11 seconds approximately, rounding off, 10.9, rounded off to 11 approximately. This is how we have converted the given 6 radians into degrees. This conversion, so this is not that easier as we have done it in the beginning. The problems we have solved in the beginning are simpler. So this is also simple but you should know degrees to minutes, minutes to seconds. So this is how we will convert 6 radians into degrees. Suppose if minus 6 radians is given, then no changes. Again, this remains same because amount of rotation remains same. Only the direction changes. So the procedure will be same, this answer. Like you will have finally, this answer remains same. Just you have to put a negative sign. That's it. Because that negative indicates in the clockwise direction. Positive indicates in the anticlockwise direction. Now, you should uh, know some formulae that will be used to solve few of the problems. Now, if you consider a circle of radius r, there is an arc AB, that arc subtains an angle at the center, which is theta, I have named it as theta. Now, if you would like to get the length of an arc L, which uh, subtends an angle theta at the center, then the length of an arc is given by L equal to R theta, where theta is in radians. Okay. So, L equal to R theta. This is the important formula. The length of the arc, which subtends at an angle of theta at the center, is given by L equal to R theta. And one more, if you want to area, find the area of the sector, this is a sector OAB, this full area if you want to find out, then in that case, this area, A equal to half into R square theta. Area of a sector which subtends an angle of theta at the center of a circle of radius R units is given by A equal to half into R square theta. These are the important formulae to be remembered while solving problems related to uh, the uh, rotation or revolution problems. And one more thing to remember is pi radian is 180 degree and one revolution, one complete rotation gives you an angle of 2 pi radian. For example, now see here, this if the point is here, then you know that angle is 90 degree. So if you want to find out the length of that arc, it is a, you know that circumference is 2 pi r divided by uh, 4 because uh, 4 equal parts it is 2 1s 2 2s uh, you will get pi r divided by 2. So in the same case if you have uh, taken suppose uh, theta equal to L equal to length of an arc L equal to r into theta length of that arc if you want r as it is theta is pi by 2 so pi r by 2 you are going to get the same thing. So that gives L is the length of an arc which subtends an angle theta at the center of a circle of radius r is given by L equal to r theta. We have to keep this formula in mind. Now let us solve few of the problems. The formula to be remembered L equal to r theta A equal to half r square theta. Now take up the first problem. A wheel makes 360 revolutions in one minute. Through how many radians does it turn in one second? So, 
uh, one minute it makes uh, 360 revolutions so you know that one minute has 60 seconds so 60 seconds 360 revolutions so i want uh, the angle by which it will turn in uh, one second so let us find out one second how many revolutions first so in one second uh, you will have uh, it is 360 divided by 60 that is nothing but six revolutions now you know that for one revolution angle traversed is 2 pi radian therefore for six revolutions how many radians so therefore angle through how many radians does it turn in one second? Angle uh, turned in one second is equal to 6 into 2 pi radian. That is equal to 12 pi radian. This is the angle. Now next question. Find the degree measure of an angle subtended at the center of a circle of radius r equal to 100 centimeter. Let us write what is given first by an arc of length 22 centimeter. We will be making use of the formula L equal to r theta. So arc length is given as 22 centimeter. Therefore we have to find out what is the angle subtended at the center theta is equal to we will have L divided by R. So that is equal to uh, <coughs> this is 22 divided by radius is 100. This will be in radians. Now this is in radians but they are asking find the degree measure. So I have to convert radians into degrees. So 22 by 100 radians. So radian radian should get cancelled. So something should be in the denominator pi radian into 180 degrees. So this radian radian cancels. They had given use pi value as 22 by 7. You will get the value in terms of 22 by 100 into 180 divided by you will have 22 by 7 that goes to the numerator 7 divided by uh, 22 cancels do the simplification you will get the angle in degrees so this way so you will get finally this is equal to degrees you can do the further simplification minutes but they had asked uh, angle in degrees this much is enough so now in a circle of diameter 40 centimeter the length of a cord is 20 centimeter circle of diameter is 40 centimeter length of a cord is uh, 20 centimeter cord is of 20 centimeter find the length of minor arc of the cord so let's draw a circle first to understand it in a better way okay so this is called diameter is a 40 let me use some other color diameter is 40 there is a cord of length 20 centimeter this is Okay, 20 centimeter. So, diameter is 40 means radius is 20 centimeter and this is cord is also 20 centimeter. This is given. Now, this cord divides the circle into two parts. One is major arc, another is minor arc. The, uh, the longest part is called as the major arc. Similarly, major segment and minor segment. This is the minor arc. There are two uh, parts of a circle. Now they are asking, find the length of a minor arc of the cord. You have to find out this length. Okay. So what I'll do is, so let me join the ends of a cord to the center. Then you will get a triangle. Now this is nothing but radius of a circle. Radius is given as 20 centimeter. This is also 20 centimeter. So it's an equilateral triangle now. This cord length is also 20. Hence the angle 
of an equilateral triangle is 60 degrees. So what I'll do is you can make use of the formula L equal to R theta. I want this length. This is length L. So I have to find out the arc length L that is found using the formula L equal to R theta. To find L, we need theta. How to get that theta is joining the ends of a chord to the center. Then AO is nothing but radius of the circle. That radius is already given as 20. Now when you have a triangle OAB with all sides equal to 20 cm, it's an equilateral triangle. So angles of an equilateral triangles are 60 degree. So degree, but theta is in radians. So you know that 60 degree to radians, that is pi by 180 degree, this cancels. So pi by 3 radians. So you will have R is 20 into theta is pi by 3. So the answer is 20 pi by 3. Next question. If in two circles, areas of the same length, arcs of the same length, subtend angles 60 degree and 75 degree at the center. Find the ratio of their radii. So I need two uh, circles. These are the two circles here. They subtend angle 60 degree and 75 degree at the center. You have to find out the ratio of their radii. They are of different size but arc length is same. So we have the formula L1 equal to R1 theta 1 for the first circle. L2 equal to R2 theta 2 for the second circle. So they had given L1 equal to L2. Lengths of the arc same. Theta 1 is equal to 60 degree. Theta 2 is equal to 75 degree. No need to, actually theta is in radians, but no need to do the conversion as uh, we are finding the ratio, the degrees get cancelled. Even if you do the conversion, that gets cancelled. So they had given L1 equal to L2, therefore equate R1 theta 1 equal to R2 theta 2. Now I want R1 by R2, which is equal to theta 2 divided by theta 1. Substitute the value of theta 2. 75 divided by 60, so that gives you 5 by 4. Therefore, the ratio of radius R1 is to R2 is equal to 5 is to 4. This is the answer. Now, let us define trigonometric ratios. Trigonometric ratios are defined for an acute angle. So, we will consider a right angle triangle. A right angle triangle has one angle equal to 90 degree. Therefore, the remaining two angles are acute. They are always less than 90 degree. For an acute angle, those are, these are called as trigonometric ratios. For a generalized version, we call it as trigonometric functions, where theta can be any angle, but in this case, theta should be an acute angle. So there are totally six trigonometric functions and when you consider a right angle triangle, there is one angle 90 degree. The side opposite to the angle 90 degree is called as hypotenuse. You consider any angle, either angle A or angle C. If I have considered angle A, then I have named that angle as theta. Then the side opposite to that considered angle theta is called as opposite side. Now for this angle A, the opposite side is BC. Therefore, the remaining side is adjacent side. Suppose if you have taken this C as theta, then AB becomes opposite side and BC becomes adjacent side. So as per the taken angle, opposite side and adjacent side varies. But the hypotenuse remains same. It is the side opposite to the angle 90 degree. Now there are totally six trigonometric ratios. For an acute angle we are defining first. Therefore trigonometric ratios. Sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent. Sine is written like this. Of theta. That is the angle. Cos of theta. Tan of theta cosecant of theta, secant theta and cot of theta. So, there are six trigonometric ratios. Now, how to define these trigonometric ratios with respect to the right angle triangle? Let's see. Sine is defined as opposite side divided by hypotenuse. 
So, therefore, in our right angle triangle, opposite side is BC divided by the hypotenuse is AC. Cos is defined as adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So, adjacent side is AB divided by hypotenuse is AC. Tan is opposite by adjacent. So, that is equal to BC divided by adjacent is AB. Cosecant is hypotenuse divided by opposite. So, you will get AC divided by BC. Secant is hypotenuse divided by adjacent. This is equal to AC divided by adjacent is AB. Last one, cot theta is, cot is adjacent divided by opposite. That is equal to AB divided by BC. Now, when you look at the definition of uh, the trigonometric function, here you can see cosecant is a reciprocal of sine. Here BC by AC you had, now AC by BC. So, it is 1 by sine theta. Secant is a reciprocal of cos, 1 by cos theta. Cot is a reciprocal of tan, so 1 by tan theta. Because the, the definition is just reverse of, of that of tan. Now, this one more thing is tan can be written as sine theta divided by cos theta. Because the opposite side by hypotenuse divided by adjacent by hypotenuse. Hypotenuse cancels, opposite by adjacent gives you. Uh, that is tan theta. Similarly, cot theta can also be written as cos theta divided by sin theta. Cos theta by sin theta. This is how we define the basic trigonometric, basic six trigonometric ratios for an acute angle using a right angle triangle. Now, let us see trigonometric functions, which is the generalized part of a trigonometric ratios. For any angle theta, we can define these trigonometric ratios and they will become they will be called as trigonometric functions now for any angle theta trigonometric functions are defined like this the trigonometric ratios are be here called as trigonometric functions they are defined like this uh, see I have considered angle in the first quadrant means acute acute we already know uh, the trigonometric ratios definition sine means opposite by hypotenuse sine theta is opposite by hypotenuse i have considered here a unit circle with a point on the circle as p of x comma y then op is the radius of the circle as it is unit circle radius is one unit you can take a circle of any radius r then drop a perpendicular from the point p to the x axis so you will get a right angle to triangle here this angle uh, POM is angle theta. With respect to this angle theta, PM is the opposite side, OM is the adjacent side and OP is the hypotenuse. So when you apply the same uh, definition here, opposite by hypotenuse, it is PM divided by OP. Now look at the value of PM is nothing but the y, y coordinate of the point. OM is the X coordinate of the point. Radius is one unit as it is a unit circle. Therefore, when you substitute the values, it becomes y by 1. That is nothing but y coordinate divided by radius. So, the generalized definition of sine function is for any point P, which makes any angle theta. So, it is a sine is y coordinate of that point divided by radius. Cos is the x coordinate of that point. Point is the point where uh, the angle theta is made with that particular uh, point that is position vector of that particular point so cos theta is x coordinate by radius because om by op x by 1 x coordinate by radius so tan theta is y coordinate by x coordinate similarly cosecant is reciprocal of sine radius by y coordinate secant is radius by x coordinate and tangent is a uh, x coordinate divided by y coordinate. Similarly, that was an acute angle because uh, within the first quadrant, if the angle is in the second quadrant. So, in that case, uh, this is not a right angle triangle now. If you join this, you won't get theta is acute more than 90 degree. But 
you can frame a right angle triangle here that is by dropping a perpendicular to the x axis you will get pm so again same om becomes the adjacent uh, side for this angle theta and pm is the opposite side for the angle theta therefore when theta is more than 90 degree it is sin theta is equal to again same this value is y coordinate pm is y coordinate om is x coordinate of the point with the sign because in the second quadrant when you move to the second quadrant x values are negative and y values only positive therefore for any angle theta uh, the functions uh, sine trigonometric ratios uh, what we call them as a functions will change their signs as well because they won't be positive all the time so sine theta is equal to here in this case y coordinate is y divided by radius is 1 cos theta is equal to x coordinate is minus x divided by radius x1 tan theta is equal to y divided by x coordinate is minus x then similarly cosecant theta is equal to 1 divided by y secant theta is equal to reciprocal of this 1 divided by minus x and a cot theta is equal to uh, minus x divided by y so similarly if theta is in the third quadrant same thing it is y coordinate by radius for sine for cos x coordinate by radius for tan y coordinate by x coordinate so this is kind of generalized definition of trigonometric ratios for any angle theta we had their opposite side by hypotenuse that also you can define but here in this case when you drop a perpendicular opposite side becomes the y coordinate and the adjacent side becomes the x coordinate for that angle theta now based on this we can define sines of trigonometric function sines of trigonometric functions look here in the first quadrant when we consider theta as acute we got all the values positive because x and y both the coordinate have positive values but whereas when the angle is more than 90 degree and it is in the second quadrant less than 180 degree second quadrant so in that case you look here the values uh, sine is positive whereas cos is negative tan is negative cosecant is positive secant is negative cot is negative so therefore uh, based on the signs of trigonometric functions when you have here the quadrants this when you have the quadrants this is first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant and fourth quadrant based on the definition here you know that x and y x, both are positive here x is negative y is positive third quadrant both are negative x is uh, negative here comes minus x and here it is minus y so here x is positive y is negative so based on this uh, when you look at the definition here as both are positive all trigonometric functions are positive whereas in this case uh, uh, sine is positive i am writing only the uh, functions which are positive sine is positive when sine is positive it's reciprocal you can see here cosecant is also positive y by 1 cosecant is 1 by y both are positive therefore in the second quadrant sine and cosecant are positive in the third quadrant tan is positive because both x and y are negative here negative negative cancels it becomes positive so tangent and its reciprocal cotangent are positive in the fourth quadrant cosine cosine is positive as well as secant is positive this is sign of trigonometric functions in the quadrants now let us see values of trigonometric functions at quadrant angles so we should know what are quadrant angles so at the quadrants like uh, here on the axis here 0 degree this is 90 degree this is 180 degree and this is 270 degree then again it continues 360 degree and so on so in terms of radian 0 radian pi by 2 this is pi then uh, we have uh, 
3 pi by 2, then again 2 pi, 0, 2 pi. Then once again this continues, 3 pi by 2 after that, 5 pi by 2, then 7 pi by 2 comes here, then 9 pi by 2 comes here, then 11 pi by 2 comes here, and so on. 13 pi by 2 and so on. Now 0 pi here, 2 pi here, so here comes uh, 3 pi, then 4 pi here, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi here and so on. Okay, Odd pi is on the negative x-axis, even pi is on the positive x-axis. Here pi by 2, 5 pi by 2, 9 pi by 2 all are on the positive y-axis. Uh, 3 pi by 2, 7 pi by 2, 11 pi by 2 and all are on the negative y-axis. Now I have considered a unit circle because the values, taking the values is easier. When you consider a unit circle means radius is 1 unit. So at this point is 1 comma 0. On the x-axis y coordinate is 0 and this length is the radius of the circle as it is a unit circle. So it is 1. This point is 0 comma 1. Radius is a y coordinate and it is on the y axis, so x coordinate is 0. Here is here minus 1, comma 0 on the negative x axis, so minus 1. Radius is unit is 1, but on the negative x axis, it is minus 1. And on the x axis, y coordinate is 0. Here it is 0, comma minus 1. So these points now named and uh, these angles are called as quadrant angles on the axis. Now you want to find out what is the value of a sine 0 degree, what is the value of a sine 180 degree, sine 360 degree, sine 3 pi and so on. Let us do that. You know that for a unit circle, sine is nothing but sine function. We have seen it is y coordinate divided by radius. So sine 0 degree means this point OM if you name, OM coincides with the x-axis. Okay. Therefore, angle is 0. What is the y-coordinate of the point m? It is 1. Okay, 1 divided by radius. Now, sorry, y-coordinate of the point is m is 0. 0 divided by radius is 1 unit. So, 0 by 0. So, again, when you rotate and go with the 180 degrees from this point to 180 degree, so m comes here. Okay. For this uh, OM, the y coordinate is a 0. So, 0 by radius is 1. Again, it is 0. Once again, 2 pi means one complete rotation. OM comes here, M comes here. Its y coordinate is a 0. So, 3 pi means again OM comes here. Y coordinate, whatever it is, y coordinate is 0. So, sin 3 pi, sin 4 pi, sin 5 pi. So, sin of n pi is always 0 for all n belongs to z. For any integer, n integer, if you consider sin of n pi is always equal to 0. This is one important result. Similarly, do it for cos now. Cos of pi, cos of 0, cos of pi, cos of 2 pi, cos of uh, 3 pi, cos of 4 pi and so on. Let us find out the value. Then we will write the generalized result for that. Cos is nothing but x coordinate of the point. Cos 0 means angle 0 degree means this OM line. What is the x coordinate of the point M? It is 1. Therefore, you will have 1 divided by radius is 1. So, 1. Cos of pi. So, 180 degree means M comes here. X coordinate of the point M is minus 1. So, minus 1 by 1 minus 1. Cos of 2 pi x coordinate is 1. Cos of 3 pi, x coordinate is minus 1. 3 pi is nothing but once again comes here, 1 and half rotation. Cos of 4 pi, 4 pi is here. So, its x coordinate is 1. So, you can generalize now. Cos of even pi, even pi is value is equal to, you can see here, 1. Cos of odd pi, 1, 3 pi, next 5 pi, it is minus 1. So, you can have cos n pi is equal to 1 if n is even and cos of n pi equal to minus 1 if n is odd. n is odd. So, this is the generalized result. Similarly, cos of 2n plus 1 into pi by 2 is equal to. So, 
that is cos of 90 cos of uh, 270 cos of 5 pi by 2 cos of 7 pi by 2 look look at cos means x coordinate of the point cos 90 degree means 90 degree comes here therefore its uh, x coordinate is 0 270 degree x coordinate 0 cos of odd pi by 2 is always equal to 0 for n belongs to z whereas for sine sine of 90 degree is 1 sine of 270 degree is minus 1 sine of uh, 5 pi by 2 is uh, 1 so y coordinate sine means y coordinate uh, cos means x coordinate of the point okay sine of uh, 90 degree is 1 sine of 270 degree is minus 1 sine of 5 pi by 2 1 sine of 7 pi by 2 minus 1 sine of 9 pi by 2 it is um, 1 sine of 11 pi by 2 minus 1 so this is how it goes if you remember just if you remember this circle unit circle then you can get any value so you can get generalized formula sine of any pi is always equal to 0 cos of n pi is 1 if n is even and cos of uh, uh, n pi is minus 1 if n is odd so for any odd n uh, cos of 1000 pi is always 1 cos of 1001 pi is it is equal to minus 1 cos of odd pi by 2 is always a 0 whereas sine of uh, pi by 2 is 1 sine of 3 pi by 2 is minus 1 alternatively it goes to 1 and minus 1 these are the values of trigonometric functions at quadrant angles now let's see values of some trigonometric functions at standard angles so standard angles include quadrant angles plus these acute angles look here 0 degree 30 degree 45 degree 60 degree 90 degree 180 degree 270 degree 360 degree okay these are common uh, and the most frequently used angle we call them as standard angles now rate this is in degree measure radian measure 0 radian 30 degree pi by 6 45 degree pi by 4 pi by 3 90 is pi by 2 pi 3 pi by 2 and 2 pi radian so this is a, this is better to remember the radian measure of corresponding uh, angles now i want uh, the value of sine 0 degree quadrant angles we already found we can directly write sine 0 is a 0 and uh, sine 90 degree is 1 sine 180 degree is 0 and sine of any pi always 0 sine 270 degree is minus 1 sin 360 degree is 0 okay. then cos of 0 is 1 quadrant angle just remember uh, recall whatever you have learnt uh, in the uh, just a few minutes before uh, like cos 0 is 1 then cos 90 is 0 cos 180 is uh, cos of odd pi minus 1 cos of uh, 3 pi by 2 uh, odd multiples of pi by 2 multiples of pi by 2 is always 0 then cos 360 degree cos even pi is 1 now tan is just reciprocal of sin and sin 0 by 1 it is 0 1 by 0 not defined infinity 0 by minus 1 0 by anything 0 minus 1 by 0 not defined and 0 by 1 it is 0 now we have to find out for 30 degree 45 degree and 60 degree see for 30 degree and 60 degree let us consider equilateral triangle equilateral triangle all three sides are equal then from point a drop a perpendicular to the side bc so equilateral triangle perpendicular exactly divides the angle into half 30 degree this angle is 30 and this angle is 60 because equilateral triangle or perpendicular dropped therefore this is 90 the side equilateral triangle has all equal sides if i name the side as a so this is a this is a this is half of it so a by 2 now make use of am square if you want to find out use pythagoras theorem here uh, am square is nothing but uh, a square ab square minus bm square that is a square minus a square by 4 so after simplification you will get the value of am as root 3 a by 2 now if you want a sine 30 degree take the angle 30 for this 30 opposite side is uh, bm so a by 2 divided by hypotenuse is a so a a cancels 1 by 2 so sine 30 degree is 1 by 2 similarly cos 30 degree is the same angle for this angle 30 degree causes adjacent side vm is opposite side am is the adjacent side so adjacent side value we already got it as root 3 by 2 into a so substitute root 3 a by 2 divided by hypotenuse is a cancels root 3 by 2 
similarly take 60 degree now this for 60 degree opposite is am adjacent is bm so am divided by ba so that is root 3 by 2 into a divided by ba is the hypotenuse a cancels root 3 by 2 for cos 60 degree cos 60 degree adjacent this bm is the adjacent side a by 2 divided by hypotenuse is always a b so it is a cancels you will get half therefore you will have sine 30 degree half cos 60 degree half cos 30 degree root 3 by 2 sine 60 degree root 3 by 2 the reverse of each other next to find out value of sine 45 and cos 45 you take isosceles triangle right isosceles triangle means one angle is 90 degree right angle isosceles means remaining two base angles must be equal so 45 45 so therefore isosceles two sides must be equal a b is equal to b c i will name them as a so using pythagoras theorem a square plus a square equal to a c square so a c square equal to 2 a square so a c equal to root 2 into a so hypotenuse is root 2 a now you take any angle 45 okay bc is opposite and uh, ac is hypotenuse so a by root 2 a a a cancels 1 by root 2 adjacent is uh, a b if you take this angle so again a by root 2 a a a cancels 1 by root 2 therefore finally we will get sin 30 degree is 1 by 2 uh, sin 45 degree is uh, 1 by root 2 sin 60 degree is root 3 by 2 cos of uh, 30 degree is uh, root 3 by 2 then cos 45 uh, degree is 1 by root 2 and cos 60 degree is uh, 1 by 2 tan is reciprocal this 2 cancels 1 by root 3 then this is 1 tan 45 degree 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 cancels this is root 3 now when you want the values of cosecant secant and tan they are the reciprocals of uh, sine cos and uh, tan respectively just take the reciprocal then you will get the corresponding values of uh, cosecant secant and uh, cot for these standard angles There is a shortcut to remember also. You can write 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then divide it by 4. That is 0, 1 by 4, 2 by 4, 3 by 4, 4 by 4 is 1. Take a square root. So square root of 1 by 4 is 1 by 2. Then uh, this is 1 by root 2. Then this is root 3 by 2. Then this is 1. So therefore now this is values of sign you will get values of sign cos is nothing but from the from this way this sign is sin 0 degree sin 30 degree sin 45 degree sin 60 degree and sin uh, 90 degree okay this is cos 0 cos 30 cos 45 cos uh, 60 and cos 90 in the reverse way tan is after getting this sine by cos you can do to get the values just to remember in case if you forget the standard values you can write like this 0 1 2 3 4 then divide the these values by 4 then take the square root for sine the straight direction for cos the reverse direction tan is sine by cos now let's see what is domain and range of trigonometric functions so when sine is trigonometric function, sine is the name of the trigonometric function, any function acts like a machine. It has an input and it produces some output. Now sine is just name of that function. Sine of theta means theta is the input, sine of theta is the output. So if you write y equal to sine theta or if you write y equal to sine x, so in this case x is the input to that input it produces some output that is nothing but y so theta is the input input is in terms of angle then it produces some output that is sine theta is an output that is the value of y okay so that is a real number input is an angle and output is a real number so output is nothing but y input is nothing but x or theta 
then sin theta is the output. So the set of all possible inputs is called as domain for that particular function. And the set of all possible outputs obtained from the given inputs is called as the range of that function. Or else, in simpler words, all possible values of x input are called as that forms a domain and all possible values of output forms range of the function. So now let's uh, see for all trigonometric function what is their domain and range. Domain means possible values of x, range means possible values of y. So here y equal to sin x here. This is all y equal to sin x, y equal to cos x. This entire function is cos of x is the output. So output is y, input is x. So now domain means possible values of x. What values you can give for x so that the function is defined? You can give any value for x, any real number as the input, you will produce some output. So output exists. So domain is set of all real number. Similarly for cause, domain is set of all real numbers because x values, possible values of x, you can give any real number. It doesn't uh, have uh, the kind of thing like it doesn't for any real number there exists some output. Hence domain is all real numbers. Whereas in the case of tan of x, what happens is you can give you cannot give all real numbers as input because tan is nothing but sin x divided by cos x. It is a quotient of two functions. So when the denominator becomes equal to zero, the function is not defined. So when the cos becomes zero, you have studied earlier, cos is zero for odd multiple uh, for uh, multiples of pi by two, odd multiples of pi by two. Okay, so you will have here cos of x is equal to zero for odd multiples of pi by two. So except those real values, rest all values tan exist. Only when uh, x is equal to 2n plus 1 into pi by 2, then what happens? Denominator becomes 0, tan is not defined. Hence, you can't give those values as inputs for the function tan. So, from the set of all real numbers, I am subtracting this particular set. That becomes the domain of the function. R minus this set becomes the domain. Rest all numbers possible except these real numbers. Now, range, uh, range I'll go to later. Next, cosecant x, same way. Cosecant is a reciprocal of sine. Sine comes in the denominator. Sine becomes 0 when x is equal to n pi. So, other than these real numbers, you can give all other numbers as inputs for cosecant x. So, from the set of all real numbers, you have to subtract n pi. n belongs to z. Okay. Similarly, secant x, same, secant is a reciprocal of a cos, cos becomes 0 again for odd multiples of pi by 2, subtract those numbers from the set of all reals, then that becomes domain of the function. Cot of x is nothing but uh, cos by sin, sin is 0 for n pi, x is equal to n pi, subtract all those values, then rest all real numbers you can give input, you can give it as value for x, hence that is the domain of cortex. This is how we find domain, possible values of x. Now when you give x value, it does some operations and it produces some output. Sign of x is nothing but, say for example, sign of 0 degree is 0, output is 0. So, x is 0 for a sine function, output is sine of 0, 0. x is a pi by 2, sine of 90 is, output is 1. Then x is a 2 pi, output is 0 and so on. This way it produces some output. Range means all possible outputs. So whatever you input you give, you can see that the values of the output lies within the closed interval minus 1 to 1. Means all other numbers in between minus 1 and 1, it is 0, 0 point, all real numbers. It is not just minus 1, 0, 1. They are not just integers. They are the real numbers included between minus 1 and 1. So that is the range of sine function. When I explain graph of uh, trigonometric function, then it becomes still very clear. Okay. 
similarly cos of x all possible outputs for the given inputs is closed interval minus 1 comma 1 all real numbers in between minus 1 and 1 including minus 1 and 1 that is the output output means values of y other than these values you won't get any output of our this cos function whereas in the case of tan x though the domain is not entire real numbers not the set of all entire real numbers but the range output possible outputs you will get all real numbers cosecant x is r minus set containing minus 1 comma uh, 1 that is interval minus 1 open interval minus 1 comma 1 means uh, 1 and minus 1 excluded all other real numbers in between minus 1 and 1 won't be output you ne will never get for example secant x can never be equal to 0 okay if secant x that is 0 1 by cos x becomes equal to 0 this implies 1 equal to 0 which is meaningless that means secant will never give you an output of uh, 0 similarly cosecant also will never give you an output of 0 Secant x also range output possible outputs are r minus minus 1 comma 1 open interval then cot of x is equal to you will get all possible real, all real numbers as the output that is called as range of the trigonometric functions now let us go to the graph of trigonometric functions here you can uh, understand the domain and the range in a uh, better way See, for example, y equal to sin x. I would like to draw the graph, sketch the graph of the function y equal to sin x. So, you can have uh, the table of our negative values also. I have just considered the positive values. The same will hold for the negative values. Now, x and y. x is your input and y is your output. Okay. When you put x is equal to 0, what is sin 0? Value is 0. 90 degree pi by 2, sin 90 is 1 those are the standard angles then sin pi sin of any pi is 0 sin 3 pi by 2 270 minus 1 sin of 2 pi it is 1 so let us plot it in the on the coordinate axis i have taken along x axis the angle theta and along y axis the sin x okay so along y axis i have taken the real numbers 1 minus 1 2 minus 2 like that here i have taken the angle theta so in terms of uh, pi by 2, started with pi by 2, then pi, 3 pi by 2, 2 pi. Okay, let us mark 0, 0. When x is 0, y is also 0. When x is pi by 2, y is equal to 1. When x is pi, okay, when x is pi, y value is 0. When x is 3 pi by 2, y value is minus 1. Here, 0, uh, 3 pi by 2, comma minus 1. When x is 2 pi, y value is 0. So on the x axis. When you connect all these uh, points, you will get graph in this way. Now look at the graph. This graph spreads over the entire x-axis, all this included. So entire x-axis gives you the domain. So domain is nothing but the entire real line. Okay. Whereas when you look at the y-axis, graph of, uh, of the sine function along y-axis, it will be having the maximum value 1 it will be having the minimum value minus 1 other than that the graph won't cross 1 and minus 1 it will be within this 1 and minus 1 including 0 so all real numbers between 1 and minus 1 included that gives you the output for the function sin x so maximum value of sin is 1 and minimum value of sin is minus 1 that also you can state from the graph Similarly, when you draw graph for y equal to cos x, see what is going to happen. x is equal to 0, same way, 90, 180, 270 and 360. Cos 0 is 1, cos 90 is 0, cos 180 minus 1, cos of odd pi is negative, cos 3 pi by 2 is 0, cos of uh, odd multiples of pi by 2 is always 0, then cos of 2 pi is equal to 1. Even multiples of pi is always 1. So, when you... Um, Plot the graph of cos x, you will get cos 0 is 1, cos pi by 2 0, cos pi minus 1, cos 3 pi by 2 0, cos 2 pi 1. Join all these points, you will get graph in this way. Again the same thing, it spreads over the entire x-axis. 
look here you won't get any point where the graph is uh, having any cuts or uh, it is having discontinuity that won't happen so for all real numbers x is nothing but inputs all entire along the entire x axis the graph is spread out hence uh, all possible values of x are nothing but all the real numbers whereas when you look at the graph along the y axis so along y axis its maximum value is 1 and the minimum value is minus 1 it won't spread further okay along the y axis so its output values y means output values are in between minus 1 and 1 including minus 1 and 1 other than that those uh, other real numbers won't be output for the function y equal to cos x similarly when you consider the graph of y equal to tan x let's say that tan x so i have included two more values here pi by 3 pi by 4 you can add pi by uh, here pi by this is pi by 6 6 it is a 30 degree so you have here pi by 6 30 degree pi 45 degree then you can add 60 degree also just to have more points to understand it in a better way tan of 0 is 0 tan 30 degree is 1 by root 3 tan 45 degree is 1 then uh, uh, tan 90 degree is not defined because sin by cos cos is not defined for uh, uh, pi by 2 then uh, tan 180 degree is 0 uh, tan uh, 3 pi by 2 is not defined tan 2 pi is 0 so whenever you have not defined we will because the graph becomes discontinuous at those points it is not defined so i will Uh, mark it by dotted lines 90 degree it is uh, not defined similarly 270 degree it is not defined 0 pi by 2 pi 3 pi by 2 then uh, remaining here tan of 0 is 0 i have marked here tan of pi by 6 so approximate this is half way so it is pi by 4 90 total length is 90 degree here so this is 45 degree so pi by 3 means pi by 6 means somewhere here over here So one by root three, that uh, approximate zero point some value it will come. So that that is marked here. So that's marked here somewhere here. Then uh, tan of pi by four is one. Tan of pi by four, this is one. Actually, it should come here. This way. So the graph should go like this. Some minor changes here. Tan pi by four is one means the graph goes like this, steeper. Okay, this way. And it continues like this. Then pi by two it is not defined. Similarly, in between pi by two and three pi by two, the graph will go this way. Okay. Now when you look at the graph of the function tan x domain is along the entire x axis the graph is not spread out there are some points at which we write not defined so that's why we are excluding uh, those points that is 2n plus 1 into pi by 2 at pi by 2 3 pi by 2 the function is not defined hence that won't be included in the domain of the function whereas when you look at along the y axis along the y axis the graph is entirely spread out so entire real line okay is the output for the function so range of the function is a set of all real numbers now when you go for cosecant x i have uh, written the table like this pi by 6 pi by 4 pi by 3 pi by 2 these are the values cosecant 0 not defined pi by 6 uh, it is uh, sin 30 degrees half so cosecant 30 degrees 2 pi by 4 root 2 pi by 3 2 by root 3 these are the values now when you mark zero it is not defined so here you have for zero it is not defined then uh, for uh, pi it is not defined so dotted line for 2 pi it is not defined dotted line so for rest all pi by 6 it is t the 2 so pi here it is pi by 4 45 degree pi by 6 somewhere over here 30 degree so it is 2 okay then pi by 4 it is uh, root to 1.4 approximately and here pi by 3 60 degree 2 by root 3 1.15 that is somewhere over here then pi by 2 it is 1 so the graph will go like this similarly here in this case 3 pi by 2 it is minus 1 so this way then again it is increasing 
This is how we draw the graph of cosecantics. Now, when you look at the graph, you can see here, there won't be any value in between minus 1 and 1. There won't be any part of the graph in between this. Okay, within this region, look, you can check here. Within this region, there is no part of the graph. Means, output can be, cannot be any value from minus 1 to 1. Any real number between minus 1 and 1. It is always above 1 and it is always uh, below minus 1. Okay, graph is always either above 1 or either it is below minus 1. Hence, the range is uh, R minus open interval minus 1, comma 1. Whereas, the graph spreads over the entire real line except at these values, that is n pi. Okay, all those values have to be subtracted. So, domain is also not the entire real line, range is also not entire real line. The same way it will happen for secant x. Secant x, when you plot the graph of the function secant x, you can have here secant. Uh, these are the points, different points, and these are the values, outputs. Okay, secant is not defined for pi by 2 dotted line. Secant is not defined for 3 pi by 2 odd multiples of pi by 2. Okay, then secant 0 is 1 that comes here. Then secant pi by 4 root in the same way. It is increasing now. Here it is increasing. Okay. Then again, this becomes, here it is this way. Okay. Secant pi is minus 1. That is the maximum value it can get here. Then the, all other values are lesser. Then similarly, secant of 2 pi is 1. The graph goes like this. Again, you can see in between minus and 1 and 1, there is no graph of secant x. That no part of the a graph of secant x comes in between minus 1 and 1. So, there is no output in which is uh, in between minus 1 and 1. Hence, ranges are minus open interval minus 1, comma 1. Similarly, domain is not entire real numbers uh, because uh, it is not defined at pi by 2, 3 pi by 2 and so on. Now, for cortex, again the same way, 0 it is not defined, so dotted and pi it is not defined in dotted line and 2 pi not defined dotted line. So, domain entire x axis will not come. There are points at which it is not defined. R minus, uh, it is uh, 2n plus 1 into pi by 2. So, here we have, so it is pi, it is not defined. So, R minus n pi where n belongs to z. Next, for the outputs, when you look at the outputs, see here, uh, for 0, not defined anyway. Pi by 6, it is root 3. Pi by 6 is uh, somewhere over here. Pi by 4, it is pi by 6. It is uh, root 3. Pi by 4, it is 1. That is here, this point. First root 3. Root 3 is one point, uh, some value above. Then it decreases, decreases, then goes down. Here, it is decreasing, go, going down this way. Whereas in the case of tan, it is increasing like this. Here, it is decreasing the reverse case. Now, when you look at the graph of the cot function along the y-axis output, it is stretching, the graph is stretching over the entire y-axis. Okay. Hence, all the real numbers are output. All, all possible real numbers are output for the function cortex. So, this is how we draw the graph of trigonometric functions. And one more thing is that you can remember it in this way, sin x. For other graphs also you can remember, but importantly for sin, from uh, pi by 4, it is the midway, pi by 4. From 0 to pi by 4, sin function will increase. 0 to pi by 4, sin function will increase. Whereas, cosine function from 0 to pi by 4, cos function will decrease. That is the important thing because pi by 4 is the common value. Sin pi by 4 is also 1 by root 2 and cos pi by 4 is also 1 by root 2. So, you have to remember that particular thing. From 0 to pi by 4, sin function increases whereas from 0 to pi by 4, cos function decreases. So, it will come this way because they they will they'll be intersecting at the point uh, pi by 4, uh, I mean 1 by root 2, this value. This is increasing and other cases decreasing. That point has to be remembered. Now, let us take up the concept of allied angles. 
the meaning of the word allied is that it is joined by or uh, relating to so that is the meaning of allied so if in the case of trigonometry allied angles mean if theta is any angle then the angles minus theta 90 plus or minus theta 180 plus or minus theta and so on these kind of angles are called as angles allied to the given angle theta okay so in general we can write it as n into 90 degree plus or minus theta are angles allied to the angle theta where n belongs to z these are called as aligned angles they are related to the angle theta by in this way 90 plus or minus or 180 plus or minus so this way if you use the quadrant then allied angles can also be denoted as if theta is the given angle so you know that 0 90 degree 180 degree 270 degree again 360 degree that is 0 pi by 2 pi 2, 3 pi by 2 and 2 pi and so on the same thing continues if i have taken any angle theta this is theta let us see the angles allied to the angle theta they are related to the angle theta that is 90 here this is first quadrant 0 to 90 90 minus theta or else one complete rotation means 360 360 plus theta so these are the angles allied to the angle theta one of the angles similarly 90 plus theta or 180 minus theta 90 is here adding to the uh, value of 90 to the value of theta 90 plus theta 180 minus theta because 180 here backwards going backwards that's why minus theta going forward means it is plus theta now 180 here 180 plus theta as well as 270 is here coming back 270 minus theta similarly 270 plus theta 360 is here 360 minus theta these are the angles allied to the angle theta along with that you can have uh, in the clockwise direction also if theta is the given angle its allied angle in the clockwise direction is minus theta so all these angles are called as allied angles uh, to the given angle theta here i can have uh, now based on these allied angles how the trigonometric functions will behave let's see that suppose if you have n pi by 2 plus or minus theta where n is odd if n is odd like uh, pi by 2 plus or minus theta 3 pi by 2 plus or minus theta pi pi by 2 plus or minus theta and so on then the trigonometric functions will change to their co-functions these are nothing but co-functions see sine changes to cos cos to sine tan to cot cot to tan secant to cosecant and cosecant to secant so if in case if n is odd that means with respect to this vertical line or the y-axis pi by 2 3 pi by 2 5 pi by 2 and so on 5 pi by 2 and so on 7 pi by 2 with respect to this y-axis or the vertical line the trigonometric functions will change to their co-functions when you are calculating the value of trigonometric functions using the allied angles okay in case of allied angles if you want the values of trigonometric functions where the allied angles of the given angle theta are given so in that case these rules have to be remembered similarly n pi by 2 plus or minus theta if n is or even trigonometric functions will remain same means sine won't change to the cos or uh, sine will remain sine like sine of pi plus theta it is sine theta okay uh, sine theta then you have the sine plus or minus that i will explain similarly tan of any allied angle will remain tan theta if n is even like for uh, this x axis 0 pi 2 pi 3 pi 4 pi and so on like this way for the horizontal line trigonometric functions will remain same for the vertical line that is y axis with respect to the y axis the trigonometric functions will change just to remember this i am saying it as a uh, y axis and x axis or vertical line horizontal line is it to remember with respect to this y axis all the trigonometric functions will change y axis in the sense what angles uh, quadrant angles will come on y axis that you should remember similarly on the x axis the quadrant angles will be 0 pi 2 pi 3 pi and so on now sine and cosine functions one more thing you have to remember the sine and cosine functions will repeat after one complete rotation that is sine of 2 pi plus theta is same as sine theta cos of 2 pi plus theta is same as cos theta you know the value of sine 30 degree sine 30 degree is equal to half 
then sine of 390 degree is also equal to half because it is 360 plus 30 degree. So initially this is 30 degree here. After one complete rotation, if you come back to this position, then it becomes 360 plus 30, 390 degree. Both will have the same uh, terminal uh, side. Therefore, the uh, values of the trigonometric functions will remain same. Um, therefore, cos of similarly, cos of 2 pi plus theta equal to cos theta. You have to remember sine and cosine functions we will repeat after one complete rotation. Means 2 pi plus theta, it is a periodic function with the period 2 pi. Okay, the uh, literal meaning of this is, like mathematical meaning of this is, sine and cosine are periodic functions with the period 2 pi. Similarly, secant and cosecant will repeat after one complete rotation. They are also periodic with the period 2 pi. But tan and cot will repeat after half of a rotation. That is, uh, they are periodic. Tan and cot are periodic functions with the period pi. So tan of pi plus theta becomes tan theta. Cot of pi plus theta becomes cot theta. You can guess this using the signs of trigonometric functions. That is, in the quadrant A, S, T, C. See, in the case of tan, what happens? A positive, negative. Then again positive, negative. So positive, negative, positive, negative. That repeats. Whereas in the case of sine, if you consider, uh, sine is here positive, positive, then negative, negative. There is no repetition until one complete revolution. Whereas positive, negative, positive, negative. That repeats after a half of a rotation. And similarly, in the case of cause also, positive, negative, negative, positive. Positive, negative, negative, positive. So, no repetition until one complete rotation. So, this thing, these things you have to remember. Tan and cot are uh, periodic with the period pi. Secant and cosecant are uh, periodic with the period 2 pi. And sine and cosine are periodic with the period 2 pi. That means their values will repeat after one complete rotation. Here also after one complete rotation. Whereas, tan and cot will repeat after half of a rotation. And one more thing to remember is... Sine of minus theta is equal to minus sine theta. Cause of minus theta. Where minus theta comes, that you have to remember. If theta is here, minus theta is in the uh, fourth quadrant. So, in the fourth quadrant, ASTC rule, cosine and secant are positive. So, cause of minus theta, secant of minus theta are positive. Cos theta, secant theta. Rest all, tan of minus theta minus tan theta. Secant of minus theta, uh, sorry, cot of, cot of minus theta minus cot theta, cosecant of minus theta minus cosecant theta. Similarly here, now the allied angles, I told the allied angles to the given angle theta, they are of the form n into pi by 2 plus or minus theta. Suppose if you have taken the first quadrant, this, to pi by 2, then this is 90 plus theta, this is 90 minus theta. The same will apply for 90 minus theta. So, whenever you have 90, 270, pi pi by 2, 7 pi by 2, in all those cases, that is n is odd, the trigonometric functions will change to their co-functions. So, sine of 90 plus theta. So, it is 90. Sine should change to cos. Then you have to check where this 90 plus theta lies. It lies in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, you have to check the sine of the sine function. Sine means is it positive or negative. In the second quadrant sine is positive so you will get here plus cos theta only. You have to check the sine of this function not on the function on the right hand side. Function on the left hand side. Here sine. I am writing the um, sine of the function on the left hand side. Now if you take cos, cos of 90 plus theta as there is 90 so cos will change to sine. 90 plus theta is in the second quadrant. Our cos is negative in the second quadrant. So you will get minus. Tan of 90 plus theta. Tan will change to cot because there is 90. Then in the second quadrant only sine and cosecant are positive. Tan is negative. So you will get minus. Cosecant of 90 plus theta. Cosecant will change to secant. It's co-function. Cosecant is positive in the second quadrant. So you will have plus and so on. Whereas in the case of uh, sine of 180 plus theta, sine of 180 plus theta, whenever you have uh, even multiples of uh, like n is even, n pi by 2 plus or minus theta, in that if n is even, okay, so in that case you will have uh, the trigonometric functions won't change 
to their co-functions, they will remain same. Sine will remain sine only, but 180 plus theta, where it comes? 180 plus theta comes in the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, only tan and cot are positive. So, rest all negative. Sine will remain sine theta only, but uh, the sine of this is minus because it is in the third quadrant. Similarly, cos of 180 plus theta is cos theta only and it is in the third quadrant. Therefore, sine is negative because cos is negative in the third quadrant. Tan of 180 plus theta will change. Tan 180 plus theta will remain uh, tan only. But uh, tan is positive in the third quadrant. Therefore, you will have plus tan theta. This way, the values of trigonometric functions at allied angles is found. Now about trigonometric identities. There are three very important trigonometric identities. Uh, they are sin square x plus cos square x equal to 1, 1 plus tan square x equal to secant square x, similarly 1 plus cot square x equal to cosecant square x, where x is an angle. Instead of x, you can take theta also. It depends on the author who has written the book or textbook. Um, Based on that, uh, they will be considering the angle either as x or uh, as theta. It is up to you. Now, here I have taken angle as x. So, to prove the identities, you can take a unit circle, unit circle with the radius 1 unit and angle is x. So, then, take any point P on the unit circle, A comma B. Then from the point P, you have to drop perpendicular to the x-axis. Then M is the foot of the perpendicular. This length is A and the length PM is equal to B. Now from the triangle OPM, you can have the Pythagoras theorem. Apply the Pythagoras theorem and you can have hypotenuse 1 square equal to OM square plus MP square. That is A square plus B square. This is the relation which you have from the right angle triangle. Then... 1 is equal to A is the X coordinate is the uh, cosine and Y coordinate is the sine. So B, B square means sine square X. I have written this first plus A square by 1 actually. There is Y coordinate by hypotenuse, X coordinate by hypotenuse plus cos square X. So you got sine square X plus cos square X is equal to 1. So I had already explained this in the very beginning of the video. So now divide throughout by a square to get the remaining identities. So 1 by a square equal to 1 plus uh, b square by a square. That is a square by a square is 1. So 1 by a square. a square a by 1 is nothing but it is um, cos. 1 by a is secant. So secant square x equal to 1 plus tan square x. Similarly divide by b square. Divide the entire equation by b square. So you will get cosecant square x equal to 1 plus cot square x. These are the very important trigonometric identities. Now we will solve few problems of the exercise. So first problem is that 3.2, this is exercise uh, 3.2 from the NCRT textbook of class 11. So first problem is uh, cos of x equal to minus half. It is given, x belongs to the third quadrant. You have to find out the remaining trigonometric functions or remaining trigonometric ratios. So x is in the third quadrant so draw this this is the point some point x angle x it is in the third quadrant so you know that cos of x in a general definition it is nothing but x coordinate divided by radius x coordinate by radius so x coordinate is 1 radius is 2 so i'll write 1 here because it is on the x axis the radius is this hypotenuse 2 drop a perpendicular you will get that then by the Pythagoras theorem, 2 square equal to 1 square plus y square. If you don't know that value, name it as y. Then y square equal to 2 square is 4 minus 1. That is y equal to root 3. So root 3. Then either plus or minus root 3. So now this is parallel to the negative y axis. So this should be negative. So you will get y equal to minus root 3 here. So now you got all the three values, all the three sides of a right angle triangle. Write one by one. Sin x is equal to opposite by hypotenuse minus root 3 by 2. Then cosecant x is equal to reciprocal of this 2 by minus 2 by root 3. Secant you can write directly from the given. That is minus 2. Tan x is equal to 
y coordinate by x coordinate minus root 3 minus 1. So it is a uh, root 3 cot x equal to y co x coordinate by y coordinate minus 1 by minus root 3 that is 1 by root 3. So you should uh, know that tan and cot are positive in the third quadrant. So you should get the positive answer rest all negative. Similarly, tan x equal to minus 5 by 12, x belongs to the second quadrant. So, this is given. Okay. Uh, draw an angle which is in the second quadrant. So, this is that uh, angle x. Then from here, this point you draw one perpendicular. Tan means uh, y coordinate by radius. Uh, sorry, y coordinate by x coordinate. So, y coordinate is 5. Parallel to y axis, x coordinate is 12. This minus 5 doesn't mean five, negative uh, element should uh, come for 5 only. First you write the numerical value. Later, because minus 5 by 12 is nothing but it can also be written as minus of 5 by 12. This minus need not be only for uh, the numerator. It can be anywhere. Okay. So, 5 and 12. First write the numerical values. Then see, this is parallel to the positive y-axis. So, 5 can't be negative. So, this is on the negative x-axis. So, 12 should be negative. Then find out the hypotenuse. These are Pythagorean triplets. You can directly write 13 or else use the Pythagoras theorem. y square equal to 25 plus 144. 144 plus 25, 169. y equal to 13. So, you will have this value 13. Hypotenuse, this value is 13. Now, find out the remaining function. Cot, you can write directly as reciprocal of term minus 12 by 5. You have minus 12 by 5 here. Sin is uh, uh, opposite by hypotenuse or y coordinate by radius, that is 5 by 13. Cos is uh, x coordinate by radius minus 12 by 13. Then cot is reciprocal of tan, done. Cosecant is reciprocal of sine, 13 by 5. Secant is reciprocal of cos, 13 by minus 12 or minus 13 by 12. So, in the second quadrant, sine is positive. You got that and cosecant positive. Rest all negative. So, this is how we find the values of trigonometric functions. Yes. Here, one more. Find the values of these trigonometric functions. The concepts of allied angles here. Let us take up the first problem that is sine of 765 degree. So first you should remember all these rules. This is 0, 90, 180, 270, then 360. The quadrant rules allied angles 90 minus theta, 90 plus theta, 180 minus so, this is 90 plus theta, 180 minus theta, 180 plus theta, 270 minus theta, 270 plus theta. Going forward from 270 means positive, 360 minus theta, then 360 plus theta, theta, or else here comes minus theta, all are here on here, 90 minus theta, 90 minus theta. So, this is your... Uh, First quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. Then ASTC rule, all here, STC rule. Now, what I have done here is um, uh, sine of uh, n pi. You know, you should know this. Sine of uh, n pi plus theta is always a sine theta. Okay, 2 pi, 3 pi. After one complete rotation, so n is even here, n even. Okay, because it is in the first quadrant. 2 pi, 3 pi, uh, two, uh, 3 pi won't come, 2 pi, 4 pi and first quadrant because in the first quadrant all trigonometric functions are positive. 765, let us split this angle first. So, 2 into 360 degree, that gives you 720. This is 720 degree. Plus extra you have to add in terms of standard angles, 45 degree. 720 plus 45 degree gives you 765 degree. Now sine of 2, n that is 2 pi it is, 2 into 2 pi, 4 pi. Sine of 4 pi plus 45 degree. Pi comes, uh, 2 pi comes here, 3 pi here and 4 pi here. So 4 pi plus theta means it is in the first quadrant only. In the first quadrant sine is positive, sine 45 degree. Okay, that is here. This is of the form sine of uh, 4 pi plus theta. So, you, you should remember the 0 pi comes here, 2 pi here, 3 pi on the negative. 
uh, x axis uh, 4 pi on the all even pi are on the positive x axis odd pi is on on the negative x axis so here it is even 2 into 2 pi 2 2 is a 4 pi plus theta it is so theta means 45 degree this is 4 pi here plus theta means going forward that is in the first quadrant and it is acute angle also sine of 4 pi plus theta gives you sine theta that is sine 45 degree in the first quadrant sine is positive what is the value of sine 45 degree 1 by root 2 therefore sine 765 degree is also 1 by root 2 similarly second problem cos of minus theta is cos theta because minus theta comes in the fourth quadrant cos is positive in the fourth quadrant so cos of 1410 now let us split this 1410 bigger angle we will bring it down in terms of smaller angles so that is 360 degree fourths into 4, 4 times. That means 4 complete uh, uh, rotations, 4 revolutions. From then we have to either subtract or add. Let us see what we should do. 4 into 360 degree that gives you 1440 degree. 1440 degree. But here we want 1410 degree. So 30 degree has to be subtracted. Now this is in terms of cos of 4 into 2 pi minus theta okay what is uh, 4 to the 8 pi 8 pi means it is here okay 6 pi 8 pi 8 pi is on the positive x-axis 8 pi minus theta it is coming backwards that means in the fourth quadrant so in the fourth quadrant causes negative so what is going to happen cause will remain cause only because these are not all odd multiples of pi by 2 okay these are all even multiples of pi only multiples of pi only therefore cos of 8 pi minus theta cos will remain cos only and theta here it is 30 degree and in the fourth quadrant cos is positive so no change in the sign also cos 30 degree value is root 3 by 2 similarly next one this is equal to there are other ways also you can write it as 3 into 2 pi 3 into uh, that is 3 into 360 degree that also you can write then you have to in that case you have to add some degrees anything is fine see for example 3 into 360 degree gives you 0 degree 1080 okay in that case you have to add some more angle so two more strips will increase not a problem anyway whichever is easier you can do simpler now tan of 19 pi by 3 we have to get the value so angle is in radians now so see here you have to find the multiple of 3 which is nearer to 19 like a 3 6 3 5 15 3 6 18 so 3 6 18 so i will write it as 6 pi 18 plus 1 extra needed so pi by 3 denominator is 3 only that is how to find out either you can write 18 pi plus pi or else 6 7 is 21 minus pi anything is fine 21 minus 2 pi by 3 in that case you have to write now tan of 6 pi plus pi by 3 where comes 6 pi 6 pi is here 6 pi plus theta means it is in the first quadrant tan is positive tan of pi by 3 so tan of pi by 3 value is root 3 that's it or else i told you tan of 19 pi so multiples of 3 3 when the 3 3 to the 6 9 then 12 15 then 18 i have used that here 6 the now 7 the 21 if you use 7 pi what is going to happen in this case 7 3 is a 7 3 is a 21 pi you will get but we want 19 pi so in this case it is subtraction by 2 pi 2 pi by 3 so where comes the 7 pi 7 pi is here on the negative 7 pi minus theta means in the second quadrant it is so tan will remain tan only because they are not with respect to the vertical line or the y-axis they are all horizontal lines only now cofunct it won't change to its co-function so tan of 2 pi by 3 with the negative sign because in the second quadrant tan is negative now again you have to simplify this tan of uh, 2 pi by 3 as pi minus pi by 3 
correct no because 3 pi minus pi gives you 2 pi by 3 this is equal to minus tan of pi by 3 with again negative because pi minus theta is in again in the second quadrant it is tan theta but minus of minus it is plus because in the second quadrant tan is once again negative so it is tan pi by 3 value is root 3 so in any case the answer is same you can do any of the method now here sin of minus 11 pi by 3 first let us simplify what is sin of minus theta that gives you minus sin theta so minus sin of 11 pi by 3 we did that first now we have to simplify this 11 pi by 3 again go with the multiples of 3 3 11 it is here 3 3 is a 9 3 4 is a 12 so 3 4 is if i take 4 3 is a 12 I want 11, so 1 has to be subtracted. So, pi by 3. So, minus, this minus already you have 4 pi minus pi by 3. Okay. So, now, where comes 4 pi on the positive x-axis? Minus pi by 3 means it is on the pull down to the fourth quadrant. So, sine of pi by 3. It is sine of 4 pi minus theta, sine theta. But there is a sine change now. Because in the fourth quadrant, sine is negative. Already one negative you have. Negative plus negative it becomes positive. So, pi by 3, sine 60 degree value is root 3 by 2. Similarly, one more. Cos of minus 15 pi by 4. This can be written as cos of 15 pi by 4. Because cos of minus theta is cos theta. Now again go with the multiple of 4. 4 4 is 16. Okay. So cos of 4 pi I will write. I have to subtract 1 pi because 15 pi here you have. So 4 4 is 16 after taking LCM it is. 4 4 is 16 minus pi 15 pi by 4. Now, where comes 4 pi on the positive x-axis? 4 pi minus theta means coming down to the fourth quadrant. So, it is with respect to the x-axis, horizontal line only. No trigonometric functions will change. So, it will remain cos, cos of pi by 4. Okay. So, there is no negative sign also because it is in the fourth quadrant, cos is positive. The final value will be 1 by root 2. This is how we solve problems related to the allied angles. Now, let's see trigonometric functions of compound angles. What are compound angles? If x and y are any angles, then x plus y, x minus y, similarly x plus uh, 2y, okay. These kind of angles are called as a compound angles. Some more difference of given angles is called as compound angles. So, now we have to find out the how to find the values of trigonometric functions at compound angles. See, for example, cos of x plus y is not equal to cos x plus cos y. It is not linear. That those functions are not linear. So, what uh, other formulae you have for these kind of uh, compound angles? Let's see. The first formula is cos of x plus y is cos x cos y minus sin x sin y. Cos of x minus y, cos x cos y plus sin x sin y. Sin of x plus y equal to sin x cos y plus cos x sin y. Sin of x minus y, sin x cos y minus cos x into sin y. So, these are the four important compound formulae related to the co functions cos and sin. For see, easy to remember for cos, whenever it is positive, it is negative here. The LH is negative, RH is positive. But in the case of sin, positive, positive, negative, negative. Let us derive one of the formulae, uh, one of the formula. Then the remaining will be uh, followed using that formula. See the derivations diagram goes like this. You have to consider a unit circle with the unit circle one radian with four points. One is P one, P two, P three, and P four. Four points. You can take anyway. Uh, on the circle. So, this is how I have considered the four points. Now, the first angle between P4 and P1 is named as X. The angle between these two rays is named as Y. Then, the same amount of angle is considered here, but it is taken in the negative direction. Okay. When you have, when you have a unit circle, means radius equal to one unit, maybe one centimeter, one meter, but one unit. So, here, 
the point P1 as it is, x angle is x. You know that if you have any coordinate of x as x comma y, y means y coordinate means sine function, x coordinate means cos function. So cos of the angle, angle taken is x here. So this is cos x, this is sine x. Similarly, P2 is so this angle is x, this angle is y, total angle would be x plus y. So cos of x plus y, comma sine of x plus y. Its y coordinate is sine, its x coordinate is cos. Divided by radius, you don't have that value here because it is 1. Now P3 in the same way, cos of uh, minus y and sine of minus y. P4, it is on the x-axis, radius is 1 unit and on the x-axis y coordinate is 0. So similarly, if the um, angle is x, it subtends an arc at the, uh, this arc subtends an angle at the center that is x, hence arc length must be equal to x only. Okay. Similarly, this arc length is y, this arc length is minus y. Now you have to consider two triangles O, P1 and P3. Just remember odd points P1, P3 and O, P2 and P4. These two triangles. One is this and another is uh, this. Now these two triangles you have to consider. From the these two triangles P1, P3 equal to P2, P4. P1, P3 is the third side and P2, P4 is the third side. They are equal because these two are congruent triangles. How will you say those two are congruent triangles? Using the uh, side angle side principle. That is, these two are nothing but radii. Okay, These are radius of the circle. So, if this is one, this is one. In this case, this is also one, this side is also one. Two sides are, two corresponding sides are equal. 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay. Then the middle angle. Already we have taken this angle as y and this is also taken as angle y. So the middle angle, I will take, take it as y, theta. So total angle is y plus theta. This is also total measurement of the angle is y plus theta. But direction is minus of y plus theta. So amount of uh, the measurement remains same. Hence, using the side angle side principle, these two triangles are congruent. So, if the triangles are congruent, all the sides are equal, all the angles are equal, which you know. Hence, I can equate the third side also. P1, P3 equal to P2, P4. So, use a square on both sides because we are going to use the distance formula. Distance formula is x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. So, as per that point P1 and P3, you take any one as x2. This is x2. If you take x2, y2, this as a x1, y1. Then x2 minus cos x minus cos of minus y whole square plus sin x minus this y2 minus y1. Sin x minus sin of minus y whole square, which is equal to similarly, this is your x2 y2 this is your x1 y1 so 1 minus cos of x plus y whole square plus 0 minus sine of x plus y whole square so now let's simplify this so using a minus b whole square formula even before that cos of minus theta is cos theta sine of minus theta is minus sine theta so minus of minus becomes plus here so a minus b whole square formula and here a plus b whole square formula. Here again a minus b whole square formula. Here anyway 0 minus anything that gives you sine square x plus y only. So then after applying that formula, see here. This is a square plus minus b square minus 2ab. So cos square x, this is uh, minus this is. A minus B. So, a, square, a minus B whole square, A square plus B square minus 2AB. A plus B whole square, A square plus B square plus 2AB. So, A cos square X plus cos square Y minus 2 cos X into cos Y plus sin square X plus sin square Y plus 2 sin X into sin Y. Then here also 1 square plus uh, cos square X plus Y minus 2 cos X plus Y. This is sin square x plus y. I am combining some of the terms together. Cos square x plus sin square x is 1. Identity, trigonometric identity. Similarly, cos square y plus sin square y is also 1. 
So then this remains and this also remains. Here also 1 cos square x plus y and sin square x plus y is also 1 minus 2 cos. So this entire value cancels. Then you can take minus 2 common cos x cos y minus sin x sin y equal to here minus 2 cos. 2 minus 2 minus 2 cancels. You will arrive at the formula. This is the form. Now, if you want to get cos of x minus y, replace y by minus y. So, in that case, cos x, cos of minus y is cos y, plus si minus sin x, sin of minus is minus sin y, hence it becomes positive. Similarly, if you want to get sin of x plus y, it is now obtained using the allied angle concept. I can write sin as cos of 90 minus theta. That becomes sin theta. In the first quadrant, cos is positive. So, here you will have the positive sign only. So, this is cause of, let us take, rearrange these two together minus using the associative property of reals. So, you have cause of pi by 2 minus x, cause of x minus y formula you apply. Cause x cause y plus sin x into sin y. So, cause of 90 minus theta, cause will change to sin because it is 90. So, theta is x cause y plus sine of 90 minus theta sine will change to cos in the first quadrant. So, all are positive into sine y. So, this is the formula of sine of x plus y. Now, using the compound angles formula, we can uh, deduce uh, or derive some of the values, find values of uh, some of the trigonometric functions like sine 15 degree. If you want to calculate the value of sine 15 degree, I can write sine 15 as sine of 45 minus 30 because we have calculated the values of all uh, uh, trigonometric functions at standard angles and we have to memorize that table. But there are like uh, different uh, angles. Uh, you can find the values of trigonometric functions at those different angles using all these concepts like even you can use compound angles, multiple angles, sub multiple angles that you are studying in the further. So using that you can find out the trigonometric function values at the remaining angle. So I will write it as 45 minus 30. This is sine of x minus y. So what is the formula of sine x minus y? Sine x cos y minus cos x sine y. So sine x is 45, cos y is 30, x is 45, y is 30. Sine 45 degree 1 by root 2 cos 30 root 3 by 2 minus cos 45 1 by root 2 sin 30 is 1 by 2. So, do the simplification root 3 minus 1 by 2 root 2. Similarly, sin 75 degree, if you want to find out the value of sin 75 degree, sin of 45 plus 30 you have to write. That gives you 75. Similarly, cos 75, cos 15, you can find out the value. Then x plus y formula, sin x cos y plus cos x sin y. Substitute all the values and you will get the final answer as root 3 plus 1 by 2 root. Now, similarly, the compound uh, angles for the function tan, tan of x plus y. So, very simple it is tan of x plus y, tan x plus tan y divided by 1 minus tan x into tan y. So, the denominator, these should not be multiples of uh, no, odd multiples of pi by 2 because the sine by cos, it becomes denominator, becomes uh, 0 not defined. So, that should be taken care. Similarly, tan of x minus y is tan x minus tan y divided by 1 plus tan x into tan y. Just one derivation I will show you here. Take the left hand side. Tan can be written as sine of x plus y divided by cos of x plus y. So, you use the formula for sin x plus y, sin x cos y plus cos x sin y divided by cos of x plus y, cos x cos y minus sin x into sin y. So, divide throughout by means each term to be divided by cos x into cos y because we want 1 here. So, at that place you have this term. So, divide throughout by cos x into cos y. So, cos y cancels, sin by cos is tan. Here, uh, cos x into cos y, cos x cancels, sin y by tan, uh, cos y is tan y, divided by 1 minus, uh, in this case, um, sin x by cos x is tan x, sin y by cos y is tan y. That is the required RHS of the formula. Similarly, cot of x plus y you can do, cot of x plus y equal to cot y into cot x minus 1 divided by cot y plus cot x. Here, if you have positive, here it is negative, but in the denominator it is positive. Similarly, cot of x minus y equal to 
cot y into cot x plus 1 divided by cot y minus cot x. So, using these formulae, we can find uh, the value of tan 15 degree. So, tan 15 degree can also be written as tan of 45 minus 30. So, use the formula tan x minus tan y divided by 1 plus tan x into tan y. So, tan 45 is 1 minus tan 30 is 1 by root 3 divided by 1 plus 1 into 1 by root 3. So, to take LCM root 3 is LCM root 3 minus 1 by root 3 plus 1. You can rationalize this. Denominator is root 3 plus 1. Multiply numerator and denominator by root. It's conjugate. New conjugate of the denominator root 3 minus 1. Here also root 3 minus 1. This is A minus B whole square formula. And this is A plus B into A minus B. So, A square minus B square. 3 minus 1. You will get 2. And this is uh, root 3 whole square. A square plus B square. So, this is, uh, there is a change. You have here uh, a square plus b square minus 2ab. So, you will have uh, three square root 3 whole square is 3 plus uh, 1 square is 1 minus, uh, this is 2 root 3 divided by 2. 3 plus 1 is uh, 4 minus 2 root 3 by 2. So, this is equal to, you can take 2 common 2 minus root 3 by 2. 2, 2 cancels, that is equal to 2 minus root 3. This is the value of tan 15 degree. Similarly, you can go do for cot 15 also. Now about multiple and submultiple angles of the given angle x and y. Or x, just x you can consider. What are multiple angles? If x is any angle, the angles 2x, 3x, 4x, multiples of the given angle x are called as multiple angles of angle x. And submultiple angles, their division just x by 2, x by 3, x by 4, 3x by 2, any, any multiple uh, in the division form are submultiple angles of the angle x. So, uh, there are important formulae related to multiple and submultiple angles. Say sin 2x, very important formulae, sin 2x, 2 sin x into cos x. How to get that? You have the sin of x plus y formula. It is sin x into cos y plus uh, cos x into sin y. In the same formula, you have to put y equal to x. So, in that case, you will get x plus x sin 2x. Sin x cos y plus cos x uh, sin y. Instead of that, you will have sin x cos x plus cos x sin x. So, 2 times sin x into cos x. Similarly, which is equal to 2 tan x divided by 1 plus tan square x. The other forms of the same formula. So, you have uh, here dividing by anything you can write, like 2 sin x into cos x you got, right, divide by 1 you can write, 1 can be written as sin square x plus cos square x, then divide each term by cos x, then cos square x you will get uh, 2, 1 cos cancels tan x divided by sin square by tan square x plus cos square x is nothing but 1, so derivation, just to remember. Similarly, cos 2x have totally four related formulae, cos square x minus sin square x, 1 minus 2 sin square x, 2 cos square x minus 1, and 1 minus tan square x by 1 plus tan square x. For cos 2x and sin 2x, it is plus in the denominator for this one, tan formula. Whereas tan 2x means 2 tan x divided by 1 minus tan square x minus in the denominator. This is obtained using the formula of tan of x plus y which is equal to tan x plus tan y divided by 1 minus tan x into tan y. Using that formula put y equal to x so 2 tan x divided by 1 minus tan square x you will get. Similarly sin 3x the derivation goes like sin of 2x plus x. Sin 3x can also be written as sin of uh, 2x plus x. Then, sin a compound formula, sin of x plus y, sin x into cos y, cos x plus cos x into sin y, into sin of x. So, this is equal to sin 2x into, you want all the terms in all, in terms of sin, RHS. Therefore, sin 2x, I can write it as 2 sin x into cos x, one more cos x, already you have cos square x plus cos 2x, totally there are four formulae, right? Which formula to use now? As you need every term in the RHS in, as a sign, so make use of that uh, 
formula which has only the sign 1 minus 2 sin square x into sin x so that gives you 2 into sin x cos square x you want only sign so replace it as using the identity 1 minus sin square x so this is sin x minus 2 sin cube x so finally this is 2 sin x plus sin x 3 sin x minus 2 sin cube x minus 2 sin cube x that is minus 4 sin cube x that is the formula similarly cos 3x 4 cos cube x minus 3 cos x tan 3x as a 3 tan x minus tan cube x divided by 1 minus 3 tan square x using the same way tan of 2x plus x now half angles are nothing but you, you have a 2x as a sin x 2 sin x cos x divide that angle to x by 2 then you will get the half angles x by 2 x by 2 formula in terms of x by 2 sub multiple it is sin x is equal to so 2 sin x by 2 cos x by just the angle is to be divided by 2 not the entire equation sin 2x is equal to 2 sin x into cos x divide only the angle by 2 so you will get this is sin x equal to 2 sin x by 2 cos x by 2. Same way for all the formula. Cos x cos square x by 2 minus sin square x by 2. 1 minus 2 sin square x by 2. 2 cos square x by 2 minus 1. Similarly for tan. Now uh, let us solve one problem. So for this is an example for those uh, um, sub multiple angles or half angles. So, if tan x equal to 3 by 4, x is uh, in between pi and 3 pi by 2, find the values of sin x by 2, cos x by 2, tan x by 2. Given tan x, but you have to find the trigonometric functions for half angles. So, first let us see where x lies, where the angle x lies. x lies in between pi and 3 pi by 2, so it is in the third quadrant. So, in the third quadrant, cos, sin, both are negative. Okay. But now we want x by 2. So divide this by 2. So you will get pi by 2 here 3 pi by 4. That means x by 2 greater than 90 less than 120. So it is in the second quadrant. x by 2 is in the second quadrant. But in second quadrant sin is positive cos is negative. So sin x by 2 positive cos x by 2 negative. You got. Now you have to find out uh, all the, these three trigonometric uh, functions values so what i will do is let us make use of uh, this tan x equal to 3 by 4 it is in the third quadrant tan means uh, opposite by adjacent or y coordinate by x coordinate so it is 3 this is 4 this is parallel to the negative y axis so 3 is negative on the negative x axis 4 is negative so pythagorean triplets the hypotenuse should be 5 so from this you get the value of cos x. What is cos? Adjacent by hypotenuse minus 4 by 5. What is the value of sine? Opposite by hypotenuse minus 3 by 5. I am keeping only these two values. That is because I can make use the formula cos 2x equal to 1 minus 2 sin square x. This formula you have. So I want cos x equal to 1 minus 2 sin square x by 2. Half angle formula. Divide angle by 2. So here sin square x by 2 gives you, bring it to the left hand side and this to the right hand side, 1 minus cos x and this 2 divided by 2. So substitute now, 1 plus this value is minus 4 by 5 minus of minus plus divided by 2. Take LCM 9 by 10, then you will get sin x by 2 equal to, this is sin square x by 2, sin x by 2, take the square root 3 by root 10. As x by 2 is pos in the second quadrant, sin is positive. Actually, there are two values when you take the square root. But here, I am taking only the positive value. Same for uh, cos x by 2. Now, cos x is equal to, you have to make use of this formula. Cos 2x is equal to 2 cos square x minus 1. So, divide the angle by 2. We will get the submultiple angle or... Uh, half angle so make the rearrangements cos square x by 2 equal to 1 plus cos x by 2 so cos x value we got it as minus 4 by 5 here okay substitute that here it is positive so it remains minus only 
5 minus 4 is 1 by 5 2 is 10. Take a square root, you will get 1 by root 10. Two values, I will consider negative because x by 2 is in the second quadrant, cause is negative in the second quadrant. Now, if you want tan of x by 2, to get tan of x by 2, it is sin x by 2 divided by cos x by 2. Sin x by 2 is 3 by root 10 divided by cos x by 2 is minus 1 by root 10. So, what happens here is root 10 cancels 3 and by minus 1 that gives you minus 3. Tan of x by 2 is minus 3. Now, I will solve, this is all about trigonometry, that is uh, uh, the basics of trigonometry plus their compound formula, multiple angle and submultiple angle formula. The only thing remained is about transformation formula and product formula. Before going there, let me solve a few problems of exercise 3.3, .3, important problems. These are based on the those allied angle concepts or angle concepts. Take up the first one. That is sin square pi by 6 plus cos square pi by 3 minus tan square pi by 4. You have to prove it as minus half. So you should remember one thing. Sin square x can also be written as sin of x whole square. Both are same. Whereas sin square x is not equal to sin of x square. These are different. Because uh, here uh, square is to the angle, here to the function. But these two are same. So what I am going to do is consider the LHS. I will rewrite this as sin square pi by 6 as sin pi by 6 whole square. Similarly cos pi by 3 whole square minus tan pi by 4 whole square. So then what is the value of sin pi by 6? Uh, it is uh, sin 30 degree half whole square cos 60 degree half it is whole square minus tan 45 degree 1 square. So this is a 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 minus 1. 2 by 4 is nothing but 1 by 2 minus 1. So that gives you minus 2. That is the required RHS. Similarly, when you take the second problem, what I will do is 2 into sin pi by 6, I will write it as whole square. Cosecant 7 pi by 6 whole square. There is no plus here. It is into now. So cos pi by 3 whole square. Now, these are all direct standard angles, you know the values, but this is not in terms of standard angle. You have to bring it down to the standard angle using the concept of allied angles. So, we will do that. First, 2 into sin 30 degree 1 by 2 whole square plus now cos 30 60 degree 1 by 2 whole square. Let us write these values as it is. So, now we have to simplify this function. Cosecant 7 pi by 6 whole square let it be. Don't worry about it. Let us find out cosecant 7 pi by 6. So, go with the multiples of 6. 6 1 is 6. 6 2 is 12. 12 is uh, to subtract. It is uh, much more far than the value 7. So, 6 plus 1 if you add it becomes 7. So, what I will do is cosecant of pi plus pi by 6. When you take LCM 6 pi plus pi 7 pi it is. So, here uh, this uh, 1 by 4 it becomes 1 by 2 plus uh, 2, 2, 2 ones, 2 2s cancels. Then cosecant of 180 plus theta, 180 plus theta. Whenever you have 180 means it is with respect to the x-axis, cosecant will remain. Cosecant horizontal line and um, pi plus pi by 6, it becomes pi by 6 here. In the third quadrant it is pi plus theta, 180 plus theta means it is in the third quadrant. In the third quadrant cosecant is negative and you have that whole square, let it be as it is. 1 by 2 whole square is 1 by 4. Now as there is whole square, minus whole, 1 whole square is minus minus positive. Cosecant pi by 6 is nothing but sine pi by 6 is 1 by 2. Cosecant is a reciprocal, so it is 2, 2 square. So, this 2 square, 2 square cancels, 1 by 2 plus 1, value is 3 by 2, that is the RHS. Similarly, you have uh, two more problems, you can try this, I have done here, cot square pi by 6, cosecant 5 pi by 6, same way, cot pi by 6 whole square, I can write directly here, cot uh, pi by 6 is cot 30 degree root 3 whole square, cosecant 5 pi by 6, so go with the multiples of uh, 6, 6 ones are 6, but I want 5, so subtract 1 now. Pi minus pi by 6. Whereas in the previous case, it was pi plus pi by 6. So, plus 3 into tan 30 degree, 1 by root 3 whole square. So, it is 3 plus cosecant 180 minus theta. 
So, 180 means cosecant will remain cosecant. It is in the second quadrant. Second quadrant means uh, secant and uh, cosecant and sine are positive. So, you will have plus pi by 6. Plus this cancels. Uh, root 3 whole square is 3. 3, 3 cancels. You will get 1. Cosecant pi by 6. Again, the value is 2. So, it, the totally you will get 6 as RHS. Similarly, here this problem can be done in the same way. Uh, sine square 3 pi by 4. You have to simplify this sine pi minus pi by 4. You have to write because uh, uh, 4 pi minus pi gives you 3 pi. The rest all standard angles substitute those values. Pi minus theta in the second quadrant sine is positive sine pi by 4. So 1 by root 2 with a square. When you simplify you will get the RHS as 10. You try this. Now one more. Uh, so, here you have to prove the following, LHS and R. One uh, good thing in uh, trigonometry is that, uh, though there are uh, plenty of formulae to remember, the thing is that whenever a problem is given to you, it is most of the time, so prove that. Find the value of is also there, but prove that. So, you will be provided with what exactly you want to arrive at. That means RH is also given. So, by looking in, at the RHs, you can, even if you forget the method, by looking at the RHs, you can formulate it what exactly you require. That is the good thing in trigonometry. Let us do that now. Take LHS cos of pi plus x. So, cos of 180 plus theta in the third quadrant causes negative, so minus cos x. Cos of minus theta cos theta. Sine of 180 minus theta it is. In the second quadrant, sine is positive, sine x. Cos of 90 plus theta it is in the second quadrant. As there is 90, cos will change to sine. And in the second quadrant, cos is negative, so minus sine. Though you get sine here, sine is uh, positive in the second, you should not do that. You have to see which function is given. Cos is given in the second quadrant, cos is negative. So, you will get uh, cos square x by sine square x, which is cot square x. That is the required RHS. Now the last concept of uh, trigonometry, it is about transformation formulae and the product formulae. They are like uh, connected with each other. So, see here, if you go with the product formula, when you have that cos x plus cos of x plus y compound formula, just here, cos of x plus y and cos of x minus y. When you add these two together, here cos x cos y minus sin x sin y. Here you have cos x cos y plus sin x sin y. When you add these two together, these two terms cancel. 2 cos x into cos y you will get so, that cos x into cos y is equal to 1 by 2 into cos of x plus y plus cos of x minus y. So, that's how you get product of formula, the derivation of product formula. Uh, now, similarly, when you subtract those, cos of x plus y minus cos of x minus y, you will get sin x into sin y with a negative sign. Similarly, sin x cos y adding sin of x plus y and sin of x minus y with a half because 2 sin x cos y you will get. Similarly, subtracting sin of x plus y minus sin of x minus y, then you will get cos x into sin y with a half. The same with the transformation formula. That is cos x plus cos y equal to 2 into cos of x plus y by 2 into cos of x minus y by 2. Cos x minus cos y equal to same as this with minus 2 sin of x plus by 2 sin of x minus y by 2 sin x plus sin y equal to 2 into sin of x plus y by 2 into cos of x minus y by 2 it's the reverse case here easy to remember sin x minus sin y 2 cos of x plus y by 2 sin of x minus y by 2 it is you can remember a c plus c equal to 2 c c c minus c equal to minus 2 yes 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 plus yes is equal to 2 yes c. Uh, yes minus yes is equal to 2 c yes. But you should know what is here in the angle. X plus y by 2. Another is x minus y by 2. Just to remember the formula. Now based on those formula, there are few problems to be solved. Now take here first problem. LHS I will take. This is 
sin x plus sin y. This is of the form s plus s and this is a c plus c. So s plus s is 2 s c and c plus c is a 2 c c. So you should know that what is 2 sin of x plus y. This is your x, this is your y, here x and y. 5x plus 3x by 2, 8x by 2 means 4, uh, 8x by 2, it is uh, 4x and here cos of 5x minus 3x by 2. Similarly, denominator 2 cos of x plus y by 2, cos of x minus, this cancels, 2 cancels, sin by cos is tan of 4x. Similarly, the second one, that is a s plus s again divided by c plus c, same formula again. So, what I will do is, I will do directly here, 2 uh, sin of 3, x plus 3x, 4x by 2 means 2x, 2 sin 2x into cos of x minus 3x minus 2x divided by 2 you will get. But cos of minus theta is cos theta, no change. So, it is cos of minus x. Similarly, 2 cos of 2x into cos of minus x, which cancels, 2 cancels, tan 2x. Now, in the third case, uh, third problem, here, what you can do is, uh, here, when you take, this is the given uh, left-hand side, when you take these uh, cos 4x and cos 3x, I am rearranging that, LHS has a cos 4x plus cos 3x, but I will shift it to the end, and I will bring it, this to the middle, cos 4x plus cos, that is because 4 plus 2 becomes 6, which is a multiple of 2, divided by 2 it becomes. Whereas if you take the first 2, you will get, but it becomes complicated as 4x plus 3x is 7x by 2, then again taking LCM. So instead of that, you can make your work easier by considering, the by interchanging these two. Okay. So cos of uh, here, c plus c again, 2 cos of 4x plus 2x, 6x by 2, 3x. 4x minus 2x is 2x by 2, x plus cos 3x as it is. Then sin s plus s here, 2 s, c. 2 sin of 4x plus 2x by 2 into cos of 4x minus 2x by 2. So you will get... 2 sin 3x and the cos of uh, 2x by 2 is x plus sin 3x as it is. Now you can take common. Cos 3x is here also, here also. So 2 cos x plus 1, sin 3x is here and sin 2 cos x plus 1, which cancels. You will get the answer as cot 3x. So these are few problems related to the transformation formulae. So important transformation formulae, product formula. There are few other problems, there are a number of problems you can have in a trigonometry. The important thing is remembering the formula and uh, the right uh, application of that formula. So at the right place, you have to apply those formulae to get the required answer. Now finally, let us recall all the concepts which we studied in the trigonometry so far. We started with the definition, geometrical definition of uh, angle. Angle is the amount of uh, rotation. Uh, we have to measure that amount of rotation. It can be done using different units. We have seen two different units, degree measure and radian measure. So in the case of degree measure, what we do is that one complete rotation is divided into t 360 equal parts and each part is called as one degree. So again, one degree is divided into 60 equal parts uh, and each part is called as uh, one uh, minute. Again, one minute is divided into 60 equal parts and each part is called as uh, uh, one second. So totally there are 3600 seconds in one degree. So this is how we define a degree measure. So where one complete rotation is divided into 360 equal parts and one part is called as a, a degree. In the case of radian measure, it is the angle subtended at the center by an arc whose length is equal to the radius of the circle. That is, uh, this is r. So if this theta is equal to 1 radian, then the arc length must be equal to the radius of the circle. If it is more than the radius of the circle, more than 1 radian. Less than the radius of the circle, less than 1 radian. And interconversions, if you want to convert uh, radian measure to degrees, so only degree should remain. So degree 180 degree come in the numerator divided by pi. 
into x radians. If you have to convert degree measure to radians, then pi by 180 degree into that given degree measure. There are some standard angles to be remembered both in degrees and radian measures. So 0, 30, 45, 60 degree, 90 degree, 180 degree, 270 degree, 360 degree. The corresponding radian uh, measures are 0, pi by 6, pi by 4, pi by 3, pi by 2, pi, 3 pi by 2 and 2 pi. If you have confusion between 30 degree and 60 degree, so uh, for pi by 6, denominator more means the less angle, denominator less means the more angle. That if you have pi by 6 and pi by 3, pi by 6, uh, the denominator value is more, so it is 30 degree. The denominator value less means it is 60 degree. So now, uh, if you want to find out uh, the length of an arc which obtains an angle theta at the center in a radius of, uh, in a circle of radius r, so then it is calculated using the formula L equal to r theta. And if you want to find the area of the sector which is formed by an arc of a length L and uh, in a circle of radius r that uh, subtends an angle theta at the center, then it is given by half into r square into theta. One revolution means it is one complete rotation where initial side and the co terminal side coincides. And one complete rotation is having 360 degrees that is 2 pi radians. The angle traversed when one complete rotation happens is 2 pi radians. Now about the trigonometric ratios or trigonometric functions. Trigonometric ratios we define for acute angles with the help of right angle triangle. Total there are six trigonometric ratios sine, cosine, tang tangent, cotangent, secant and cosecant. Sin is opposite by hypotenuse, cos is adjacent by hypotenuse, tan is opposite by adjacent, cot is uh, hypotenuse by, op uh, cot is uh, adjacent by opposite, secant is uh, hypotenuse by adjacent, cosecant is uh, hypotenuse by opposite. Trigonometric function, more generalized version of trigonometric ratios where you can define for any angle theta and we will use the quadrants to define that. Usually we define sine as y coordinate by radius and cos as x coordinate by radius. Accordingly, all other trigonometric functions will change into y coordinate and x coordinate and radius concept. Now you should remember some uh, quadrant angles that is uh, at the positive x axis 0 degree, 90, 180, 270 and then 360 degree and it continues. In terms of radians 0, pi by 2, pi, 3 pi by 2, 2 pi. So if you continue like that all even pi's are on the positive x axis, all odd pi's on the negative x axis, all this pi by 2 on the vertical axis that is y axis. Uh, multiples of pi by 2, all multiples of, uh, odd multiples of pi by 2. So you will have pi by 2 here, 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2, 7 pi by 2 and so on. This has to be remembered because based on this we can conclude the values of uh, some trigonometric function. Sine of any pi is a 0. Similarly, cos of n pi is 1. If n is even, cos of n pi is minus 1, n is odd because we are considering the unit circle here. On the unit circle, this is 1, comma 0, this point is 0, comma 1, this point is minus 1, comma 0, and this point is 0, comma minus 1. So accordingly, sine of any pi is 0 because y coordinate, sine means y coordinate on the x axis, it is always 0. Cause of odd multiples of pi by 2 is 0 because on the y axis, x coordinate is 0, cause means x coordinate. Similarly, cos of uh, even pi is x coordinate 1, cos of odd pi here x coordinate minus 1. That's how we can conclude. Then standard values of trigonometric functions you have to remember that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 divide by 4, 0, 1 by 4, 2 by 4, 3 by 4 and 4 by 4, 1. Take the square root 0, 1 by 2, 1 by root 2, root 3 by 2 and uh, uh, then 1. So this is the value of sine. 0 degree, 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree. Then cosine, the reverse way. Okay. Then tan is sine by cos. That is how to remember. Then about the signs of trigonometric functions in the quadrants. First quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant and fourth quadrant. First quadrant, all trigonometric functions are positive. Second, sine and cosecant are positive. Third, tan and cot are positive. Fourth quadrant, cosine and uh, uh, secant are positive.
Now graphs of trigonometric functions, just remember sine and cos, other graphs are also important, but sine and uh, cosine graphs are more important. So this is where sine graph passes through the origin, cosine graph doesn't pass through the origin. So you can have sine graph increases from 0 to pi by 2, that is first quadrant, decreases in the second quadrant, decreases in the third quadrant, then again increases in the fourth quadrant. Similarly here, uh, cosine graph, cosine values actually, decreases in the first quadrant, decreases in the second quadrant, increases in the first quadrant. From where to where, that is 0 to 1, you have it. So the domain of sine function is the real numbers, range is minus 1, 1, closed interval. Same for a cosine also. That means maximum value of sine is 1, minimum value of sine is minus 1. Then about allied angles, the angles uh, allied to the angle theta are they are related to the angle theta. They are 90 minus theta, 90 plus theta, 180 minus theta, 180 plus theta. Moving forward, this is 180. Moving forward positive, coming backward negative. 270 minus theta, 270 plus theta, 360 minus theta, 360 plus theta. And one more you can have a in the uh, clockwise direction minus theta. These are all allied angles. And when you have a... Uh, uh, how to find out the values of trigonometric functions at allied angles. You should remember when you have n pi by 2 plus or minus theta allied angles. So odd multiples of for pi by 2 in that case uh, trigonometric functions will change to their uh, co-function sine to cosine, uh, tan to cot and secant to cosecant. Uh, whereas in the case of even multiples, here n is even, in this case n is even, in that case trigonometric functions will remain same, there is no change. There is difference between co-functions and uh, reciprocal, see sine and cosecant are reciprocals, uh, cos and secant are reciprocals, tan and cot are reciprocals, whereas sine and cos are co-functions, uh, cosecant and secant are co-functions and tan and cot are co-functions of each other. Then about compound angles, the sum of or difference of any two angles uh, form compound angles. Then the formula cos of x plus y, cos of x minus y, sin x plus y, sin x minus y, tan x plus y, tan x minus y. Multiple and submultiple important formula sin 2x, cos 2x, sin 3x, cos 3x, tan 2x, tan 3x and so on. Then about transformation and product formulae, these formulae have to be remembered. These are also very important formulae. And based on those formulae, the problem, solving the problems. The important thing in trigonometry is that memorizing the formulae and practicing more and more problems. So when you practice more and more problems, you will get new ideas because there are different approaches to solve one particular problem. There is no unique way of solving. So that comes by practice. When you practice and solve, more problems, work out more problems, then definitely you will master trigonometry. I hope you understood all the concepts. Thank you for watching.